Hey, guys. Y'all came together. Yeah, I picked everybody up. You know how Elvis is always late. I gotta get my stuff together. It's all in one big folder. What do you have to get together? Well, remember when we were doing the Forbidden Passions campaign, and we got charmed by that succubus, and we drowned each other in the Lake of Supple Reflection? I remember killing you. I forgot my rule book that day. It's okay. I've got the rule books. It's bad luck is what I'm saying. You get killed every campaign. That's because you always kill him, Mason. But not because he forgot his rule book. I brought some soda and some chips. Thanks, Larry. Wait, these are gluten-free. What the heck? Yeah, and the soda's diet. Why? I told him you wouldn't like it. Who goes on a diet and still drinks soda? I mean, it isn't really and a none thing. of us are gluten intolerant. Jesus, Larry. I know that. Then why did you bring us gluten-free chips? Paul, I might be gluten intolerant. You're not gluten intolerant, Elvis. No, remember when I was telling you at lunch You about were eating a burger. Yeah, right, and I was saying that I might be gluten intolerant? Did you get sick after eating the burger? Is there gluten in burgers? Yes! <sighs> Elvis told me he was gluten intolerant. Wow, <laughs> these taste like shoes. Well, thanks for nothing, Elvis. Is there gluten in soda? I made Lowry buy some other snacks. Yeah. Then why'd you bring in these? What I did know you if there were other snacks that nobody would eat these gluten-free ones and I don't want them. Well, would you get the good ones, please? Fine. All right. Uh, Mason, Elvis, come over here to the table. I'm all set up. Where's the battle mat, Paul? We don't need a battle mat. We're not playing D&D &D anymore. But there's range penalties every 12 meters. That's like the size of a four-story building. Well, what, what if I'm you... 13 meters away and I don't realize it? Elvis, look at my living room. About how long do you think it is? Uh... Put the tape measure down. God, finally. I'm so sick of doing trigonometry in imagination land. How am I supposed to know how big the living room is if you won't let me measure it? That's the point. You don't know. I bet you're the guy who made the building new. Did your character build every building in my campaign? There's rules in this system that say I can pay to say I did. Don't you dare. Actually, there's a power that lets me know the absolute distance between any two points. That's better. I'm going to take that instead. Hey, Elvis. Can you add that built every building in town to my character sheet? Yeah, sure, Mason. Damn it. You guys suck. You're supposed to be cyborg cops. I moonlight as an architect. Okay, I got the good chips. Where's the battle mat, Paul? We're not playing D&D. &D. We don't need battle mats, Lowry. Okay. All right, did you guys read the handout that I posted? Heck no. I only read the weapons and the equipment, so you guys have no idea what the game's about. I'm not gonna read two pages of backstory for a one-shot, Paul. We're only gonna play one night. How are you gonna know who you are? I'm a cyborg cop and a moonlight architect. I know exactly who I am. Yeah, because that's practically a trope. I read it, Paul. Well, at least Lowry read it. I bought so much cool stuff. I'm excited. All right, I guess we're just gonna roll right into it. You guys are three cyborg cops. Practically everywhere on Earth is in poverty, but you patrol one of the most impoverished, unfortunate stacks of futuristic mobile homes in the world. What do you mean, stacks? Like, are they stacking mobile homes on top of each other? Yes, Mason, like I wrote in the handout you didn't read. Well, is that not like an apartment complex? No, it's not as well regulated, and the landlords are bigger assholes. The future sucks. All we did is reinvent apartments. I tune my cyborg ears into the police frequency. Do I hear any crimes going on? Well... You don't have to eavesdrop on the police because you are the police. Your dispatch calls in and says, Car 24, this is dispatch. We have reports of a possible 187 in your area. If you could keep your eye out for a Latino woman in a bloody nightgown, we think she stabbed her husband. Women, am I right, guys? Uh, dispatch, I just gotta say, that's pretty sexist, over. That's what my wife said. You know, one of these days I'm gonna be in a 187. Dispatch, what is a 187? 187 is homicide. Dispatch, you could have just said homicide. There's no reason to lord your police jargon over us. Over and out. Hey, Paul, how recently do I think the murder happened? Uh, I got five oh. degrees of success on deduction. <sighs> I mean, probably within like a couple of minutes, it just got called Do I in. think I can get there fast enough to save the guy? I mean, ah, I failed by three. I guess... Shut but... up, Elvis. I put the pedal down. Thank you, Mason. You tear down the street as fast as the squad car can take you. Oh, uh... Turn on the sirens, about halfway there, you know, like when I remember. Remembering to turn the sirens on about halfway there? It's lucky it's like 3 a.m. And as you're barreling down the pavement, you pass by a woman running in the opposite direction along the road. She's wearing a bloody white nightgown and carrying a knife. Slam on the brakes. I'm not wearing a seatbelt. What? Why? You, Why are you, you not wearing be? a seatbelt? Well, I never said I put it on, so I'm not wearing one. Okay. 
Uh, Officer Elvis goes flying right through the windshield. Glass shatters dramatically, trailing behind Elvis like pixie dust before he collides with the pavement at about 55 miles per hour. He takes... About 89 stun and 23 body. Elvis, is your character dead already? Nah. I got a reinforced carbon steel skeleton. I'll be okay. God damn it, Officer Elvis. You blew up my dang windshield. Look at this. I am unconscious, though. I don't know that. How many times do I have to tell you to wear your seatbelt, you idiot? This is the third time in two days. And Officer McNulty is still pissed about his squad car. I swear to God, I hope this time you're dead. The lady with the knife has stopped, and she's just staring, completely aghast. She's never seen anything like this. Hey, lady, did you see a murderer come by here? She looks at you, then she shakes her head no, then she looks at the knife and drops it on the ground. Hey, did you just drop that knife? Don't lie to me, I'll know. She runs away. Hey, chase her. You're a trained police officer, and she's not in good shape, so you catch up pretty easily. Tackle her. Ah, shoot. You go in for the tackle, but trip over a pothole, falling to your knees and scraping up your palms when you catch yourself. Oh. Wait, where the heck is Lowry? I don't know. Lowry? I guess in the squad car. Officer Lowry! I get out of the squad car. Get Officer Elvis! I need backup! Okay, I I go to get Officer Elvis, and I guess shake him awake. Do I wake up? Yes, uh, Lowry shakes you awake. You're feeling dazed and disoriented, but awake. Ugh, ugh. Ugh, my head. What happened? I succeed by two. Do I remember what happened? You flew through a windshield for apparently the third time this week. Are you okay? I guess so. Elvis! Do something! Okay, how far away is that lady? Well, she hasn't had a lot of time to get away, so not that far. No, no! I bought exact range sense, remember? How far away is she in meters exactly? Damn it. Elvis, I don't know, like, eight meters, I guess. Well, my attack only has a range of six meters, so I step forward exactly two meters and then sneeze. A man-sized net bursts out of my nose and ensnares the perp. Wait, you can sneeze nets? Yeah, only two, though. I've got one in each nostril. Okay. Well, not expecting that, the woman, to her surprise, finds herself wrapped up in a tight net. Bam! What you gonna do when the cyborg cops come for you? Give me five, Elvis. Yeah, congrats all around. Uh, but hang on, I gotta go use the restroom. Get yourself some water, help yourself to some more soda, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. What are you doing, Elvis? I'm slaying a dragon, Paul. Why? What'd the dragon do to you? Nothing to me personally, but he's black, so you know he's evil. You know, the company is changing the D&D alignment rules exactly because of sentences like that. Well, put your D20s away. We're done with that system, and we're done with those dice. I know, but I figured I'd just fit the D&D battle experience in between breaks. I got all the stats memorized. And done. Dragon's dead. Good job, Mason. Good job, Larry. Thanks. I feel about as accomplished as usual. Man, you finished that in five minutes? If that had been real, your turn alone would have taken ten. And I'd have advantage on every roll. Yeah, and like 40 skeleton minions that I have to keep track of. Man, Paul, do you remember when those peasants gave us a cash advance to clear out that dungeon, and we used the money to hire every peasant in town to clear it out themselves? Yes, Mason, you argued for a half hour that that should happen. I normally expect that kind of stuff out of Elvis. It was my idea. It was hilarious. 500 gold, you say? How many peasants live here? About 500 and everyone chipped in one gold? Says in the book, you can hire a peasant for one gold a day. And in fairness, we did get everyone worshipping the god of nihilism. He's not really that bad of a god when you think about it. He doesn't even ask you to pray. He wasn't even real. Now, let's not get into that. That's just in the spirit of his religion. I mean, there's a pantheon in the book. It was a god that you made up to get the people to garrison an army of skeletons that you didn't even send to the dungeon. Well, if a bunch of your skeletons die, it takes forever to replace them all. Honestly, one of my prouder adventuring moments. All right, whatever. Elvis, put the funny dice away. Goodbye, funny dice. I'll miss you. All right, so you guys have just caught a suspected murderer in a net that Elvis had sneezed out of his nose. Okay, right, right, okay. Uh, so... Sorry, ma'am. You should know, my friend is allergic to fugitives. She rolls over and looks at you. Hey, aren't you the guy from TV? From the TV? Wait, am I? Yeah, you're the guy who designed every building in the city, remember? Thanks, Elvis. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's me. Architectural prodigy, Officer Mason. Wow, shouldn't you be, like, rich? Why are you a cop? Well, ma'am, I have a gambling problem. Oh. Paul, what kind of accent is this? 
I succeed by two. Does my character know what kind of accent that is? Sounds like Space Mexico. Wait, have we colonized space? Yes, it said so in the handout that you didn't read. I succeed by zero. What do I know about Space Mexico? You know it's a man-made satellite in space and that their military is composed of pro wrestlers with laser guns. Space Mexico sounds freaking rad. Ma'am, are you from space? I succeed by three on persuasion to make her tell me. No, she says. I live here in the stacks. Is she lying? Oh, I failed by two. She might be lying. Shut up, Elvis. Ma'am, can you tell us where you live? Uh, I, I don't know. I am very disoriented here in the dark, and I don't know where I am. Okay, I see. Well, you know, ma'am, I didn't join the force just to pay for my gambling addiction. I joined because I hate artificial intelligence. It is out of control. Okay. Well, I am not artificial intelligence. I All right, am... I, I get that. But I'm telling a story. Listen. Okay, I guess I am not going anywhere. That's right, because you're in a nose net. Anyway, so one day I'm patrolling the park and I see this... We uh, have a park? Yes. I bet they just do drugs there. Yes, it is a real problem location. And anyway, so there's this homeless android, and he turned off his pain sensor so he can sleep on the benches without being bothered by those pointy things, you know, to keep the homeless off. Uh-huh. So I arrest the guy. And you know what I learned that day? You can get six years for being homeless. So I'm going to ask you again, where do you live, ma'am? Give me a persuasion roll. I failed by two. I provide an assist roll. Elvis, you're supposed to do that before Mason's dice hit the table. Besides, what are you even doing to help? I am nodding enthusiastically to everything that Mason says. Ah, oh, shoot, I failed by two. Okay, Paul, I'm going to perform a push. I put all of my endurance into raising my persuasion rank. So... You're basically standing there nodding so aggressively that you strain your neck. Look, lady, if you don't cooperate, my friend here is crazy. Look at him. My neck hurts! Cooperate! So, what do you got with that, Elvis? Pass by two. That adds one to Mason's roll, so Mason, you fail by one. She looks at you and says, Is that less time than you get for murder? Uh, yes? Okay, then I am homeless. Okay, fine. Elvis. Stop vibrating your coconut and help me get this lady in the back of the squad car. Can you let me out of the net, please? No. Wait, I'm riding in the back seat. Oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, Lowry's back there. Uh, we got like a four-door, don't we? Isn't that like a normal squad? Uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about this. You wrote a short book report on Space Mexico, but you didn't think about the squad car? I mean, it seemed intuitive, like something I'd, I, I, just, I didn't think about. It. All right, lady, you're going in the trunk. Uh, Mason, that's not very nice. Well... Can we call for someone else to pick her up? We gotta get to the murder scene. It wouldn't be very ethical to just put someone in the trunk. Well, what is even in our trunk? What do we keep there? I guess, like, guns and stuff? Oh, well, that's not gonna work. I guess I could go in the trunk. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, you're trustworthy back there. All right, uh, take the lady to the back seat. Don't take her out of the net. Buckle her in. Okay? Are you comfy? No. That's good. Close the door. All right, Larry. I'm ready. Okay, Elvis, come here. You pick up Larry's legs. I got his shoulders. Okay, and uh, I guess just stuff him in the trunk. Larry, give me a contortion roll. Succeed by zero. It is a tight fit, but you wedge him in. You're doing a good thing. The force is proud of you, Larry. If only my parents could see me now. Close the trunk. All right, both Lowry and the perp are successfully apprehended. Now that Lowry can't hear us, I just want to say, you know, Elvis, I don't think Lowry's going to make it with the police. It's not airtight in here. I can still hear you guys. Oh, that reminds me. Go grab that bloody knife that lady dropped. Glad that somebody remembered it. Yeah, you pick it up. Do I know whose blood is on the knife? I passed deduction by three. Well, considering that Dispatch called about a lady murdering her husband, you've got to guess it's the husband's blood. Is there anything weird about the blood? Well... It's smeared all over a kitchen knife, which, given the circumstances, implies a crime. That's kind of a red flag. But it's not, like, animal blood or anything. Get in the car, Elvis! I get in the car. Uh, so Officer Mason, what do I do with this knife? I don't know, just put it in the glove compartment, I guess. Okay. All right, let's head on down to that murder address. You start the car and begin driving. The lady in the back says, where are we going? I cannot see through the net. Oh, well, we got a call about a murder, so we got to go drop off and do that first, but then we'll go back to the station. She stays quiet for the rest of the drive. In a few minutes, the gravel crunches as you pull to a stop in the front of the stack where the homicide supposedly took place. The door on the bottom floor has blood smeared on the handle. Ma'am, is this your house? No, I am homeless. All right, I get out. Come on, Elvis. 
Does the blood on the door look the same as the blood on the knife? What do you mean, does it look the same? It's blood. Oh, never mind. I failed by four. Guys, I don't think this is the same blood. What do you mean? Even if you fail by four, it's all blood. But if this is, like, I don't know, dry, and the knife is still wet, then it, it could be like... What? Elvis? A completely separate murder? It's a bad neighborhood! The blood's only gonna dry at different rates based on the volume anyway, so... Well, I failed by four, so I don't know that. <sighs> Knock on the door. A bald white guy answers the door. He's not wearing a shirt, and he's got about 30 scars that look suspiciously like stab wounds. Behind him, you can see blood all over the carpet. Uh, hello, officers. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. We got a call about an attempted homicide. Oh, well, you must have the wrong address. As you can see, nobody's dead around here. I can see a ton of blood on your carpet, guy. Oh, that? That's that's just, a uh, old spaghetti sauce. Oh, it looks like his pants are covered in blood, too, by the way. Paul, I succeed by one to tell if this guy is lying. <sighs> My partner thinks you're lying, sir. Do you mind if we come in? Yeah, okay, I guess. Uh, you'll see nobody's been stabbed to death in here. Paul, do I know if the guy is lying? Elvis, it doesn't look like spaghetti sauce. He lets you in, and it looks like a fairly typical living room. On the coffee table, he's got some old magazines, a pair of scissors, a TV remote. But no sign of spaghetti? Where's the spaghetti, sir? Wait a minute. Hang on. Pick up the scissors. Officer Lowry, I'm gonna need you to hold these and stand where I can see you. I'm still in the trunk, Mason. Oh, yeah. Sir, I'm gonna need you to hold these. Keep them where I can see them at all times. I don't want to get stabbed or anything. Uh, the guy takes the scissors and holds them out where you can see him. I already ate all the spaghetti. I washed it up in the sink. And I was gonna wash the clothes in the carpet, but then you guys showed up. Check the sink for spaghetti. I failed by two. You don't see any spaghetti. Well, I failed by two, so does that mean that there is spaghetti? Elvis, you don't see any spaghetti. Officer Mason, come help me look for spaghetti. Elvis, he's lying about the spaghetti sauce. We caught a lady fleeing from the crime, carrying a bloody knife who fits the suspect's description. The man is covered in scars. Obviously, he's some kind of android or something, and he healed it. But if I failed my role to look for spaghetti, and there actually was none, then shouldn't I find something that makes me think that there is spaghetti? It's a DC zero check. You don't have to roll. Oh, that makes sense. It's not D&D. &D. There's no such thing as a DC check. Everyone, shut up. Sir, I can't help but notice that you have all these stabbing scars. What's up with that? Oh, that. That's nothing. I just fell down a couple of times on a knife. You know, while grilling burgers. He scratches one of his scars and it opens up a little. You notice it starts to leak a sort of viscous black ooze. He looks down and says, uh-oh. Black tendrils suddenly burst out of his body in all directions, making a wet suction sound as they pass through the scars. Oh, God. What's he doing with the scissors? Holding them in his hand as he stands there looking terrified. Sir, keep the scissors where I can see them. The tentacles grasp firmly around a window frame. Sir, keep the scissors. Elvis, do something. I'm looking for spaghetti. The tentacles slingshot the man violently through the window, launching him outside with a crash. I have lost sight of the scissors! And I can't find spaghetti either! Elvis! You find a box of dry spaghetti in one of the cupboards. Finally, evidence! Elvis, the scissors are running around the city unsupervised, attached to God knows what kind of abomination. We have to catch them, now! Run outside with Mason. You guys get outside just in time to see a man with a flat top haircut, a leather jacket, and a high-end motorcycle tear off towards the woods. The bike looks way too pricey for anyone out here to afford. Where's the scissors? Not in sight, but if you had to guess, probably in the woods. Or possibly the opposite direction and that guy was making a run for it. Go to the trunk and pop it open. Lowry, you are not gonna believe what just happened. You screwed up an arrest. No. I mean, yes, but it's not my fault. I keep writing that in the reports, and pretty soon, no one's gonna believe me. Well, if they think you're lying now, you're about to lose your job. Well, I really wish that I'd been able to see what I'm about to lose my job over. I'll explain on the way. Come on, Elvis, get in the car. All right, I'll tell you now, the trail's gonna be hard to follow and it's gonna go cold quickly. But I put some brownies in the oven for you guys, and I ought to check on them, so give me a second, I'll be right back. Good news, I got the brownies just in time. The pan's still hot. Watch out. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. It's not my favorite brand, but okay. Larry, you show up with gluten-free snacks and complain about my brownies? I brought real snacks, too. Oh, right. How do you know just by looking what brand they are, Larry? 
Because, Elvis, I like cosmic brownies, and I don't see these wrapped up in plastic. Cosmic brownies? I think those are weird. They always taste bitter to me. Me too. That's why I like them. I bet those aren't even really brownies. They're brownie-like product. Like, a lot of cheeses aren't really cheese. Mason, I thought you liked processed cheese. Yeah, on sliders. I'm just saying. I mean, you like chorizo sliders with processed cheese and sliced jalapenos. Yeah, Mason, you're a real tryhard with food. I don't know, I feel like I could go for those again. Elvis, the last time you had one of Mason's sliders, you threw up. Well, you know how sometimes you gotta try a food to remember why you don't like it? Salty, savory, and spicy is not that crazy of a combination. How are you guys so weak? I mean, in theory it's not wrong, but you put three layers of jalapeno on it, then you spiked it with Tabasco, and tossed in crushed red pepper. You guys are just babies. Wait, is there gluten in jalapenos? Maybe I have a capsicum intolerance. Everybody has a capsicum intolerance. That's the point of spicy food. It's a defense mechanism by the plant. It's not supposed to make up three-fifths of your meal. You can build up a tolerance. I mean, Elvis, what do you eat most of the day? Milk and ice cream? Sometimes I have cereal. I know. Do you guys ever think it's weird how one day people ate this plant that hurts him? Whoever decided to do that? It's probably more like you make your friends eat it, and then you laugh at their suffering. I try to share with you guys the joy of spicy chorizo sliders, and you make it out like I'm a bad person. You know, I do think I like the brownies more. Well, the brownies are going to make us fat. Paul's going to give us coronary disease. I'm trying to turn you guys into men. I'll have the spicy sliders again if you want. You're just going to throw up again, Elvis. It's okay. I mean, so long as I'm trying new things, or remembering why I don't have the old things. So, anyway, the game? Right, yes. So let's see, uh, you guys were called to a murder scene, but then the guy wasn't murdered. However, the guy then burst into tentacles and threw himself through a window. He was carrying a dangerous pair of scissors. That you gave to him, Mason? And you were telling Lowry about it. Come on, Lowry, get out of the trunk. This guy just exploded into an ooze monster. It's crazy. I don't think it was illegal, but it is crazy. Well, if it's not illegal, do we have to do anything about it? That is a good question. Get on the radio. Hey, Dispatch, we just saw a guy turn into a tentacle abomination. Is that illegal? Was he above the age of 18? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Then there's nothing that says he can't. Well, he is wanted for questioning about the spaghetti sauce on the floor and all over his pants. Dispatch, is it illegal to claim that your own blood is spaghetti sauce? I mean, I'm really going to need a lot more context, but if it were illegal outright, my wife would already be arrested, you know what I mean? Will you... No, I don't, and, and you ought to go to therapy, Dispatch. That's what my wife keeps saying, but if I do, she wins. Well, I'd let her win this one. I don't know, guys, what do you think we ought to do, Elvis? Well, that guy on the motorcycle is speeding. You know, we could chase after the scary thing, or we could give that guy a speeding ticket. We probably ought to do that. Look over my shoulder at where that guy went. Paul, is that guy to be seen anymore? Not after all this conversation, no. He's long gone. All right, good hindsight, Elvis. Bronze star. Could it go up to silver if we catch him? No. Uh, star color's permanent, or else we're going to be litigating stars all day, and I do not want to. Ah. Uh, Lowry? I think we could fart around the woods for a while, pretend to look, you know, so we can say on the paperwork that we tried. I like the way you think. I don't want to be bored while we're doing that, though. Tap on the glass at the back of the squad car where that lady we arrested is. Hey, lady, this is your house, right? I might look the other way on your crimes if you tell me where you keep your marshmallows. She says, what? Tell me marshmallows? where- Marshmallows? Tell me where- They're in the cupboard by the sink. What are you guys doing out there? I heard a window break. We're investigating a crime. We're police, you know? I'm not sure I still believe that. Go get the marshmallows, Elvis. You got it, Officer Mason. So, can I just hop in the back seat? The lady's all tied up in a net. Yeah, I'm really worried she's not going to be able to defend herself from you if you go crazy, Lowry. Fine. I'll go get back in the trunk. You wed yourself on back in there. My leg's going to fall asleep again. I just know it. Close the trunk. I failed by one to find those marshmallows. You find some marshmallows, Elvis. Mason, I found what I believe to be marshmallows. All right, good job. Gold star on this one. Wait a minute, Elvis, these are mini marshmallows. Yeah, so? What do you think we're going to do in the woods? Make a cup of cocoa? I don't have mugs. Does it look like I carry cocoa mugs on me, Elvis? No, it doesn't, sir. Jesus, what is this, your first day on the force? We need roasting marshmallows, like the type you can put on a stick? I'm sorry, Officer Mason, this was a rookie mistake. Go back and get more marshmallows. Hop back in the car, lean back to the cage for that lady. I'm sorry, ma'am. You know, he's a good cop. 
He just kind of forgets where he is sometimes. Okay, you find some big marshmallows this time. They were where you found the little marshmallows. Also grab two coffee mugs and throw it all in a pot. Okay. Wait a minute, Elvis. What are you doing? You can't just take a person's cookware. Well, I thought we'd make some cocoa. Ugh. Ma'am, do you have cocoa? No, I don't think so. Wait. You got tiny marshmallows but no cocoa? Your story doesn't add up at all, ma'am. Are we gonna have to take you downtown for questioning? Sometimes I cook candied yams, and I put marshmallows on top. Okay. All right, your alibi checks out. Oh, wait, hang on. I succeed by three to know if she's lying. Paul, is she lying? Ma'am, would you mind if we borrow some of your cookware? Okay, she says. Why do you need my cookware? And no, Elvis, it doesn't seem like she's lying. Well, your husband ran off to the woods, so we're gonna need marshmallows, maybe hot dogs. My friend here wants some cocoa. Uh, okay. Listen... I promise I won't tell anyone I saw you. Please, just let me go, and I promise I will not tell anyone. Who are you gonna tell? The police? We are the police. Tell her, Lowry. We're the police, ma'am. I, I won't tell anyone. I, I promise. No police, no nobody. Man, we're gonna have to go and, like, get some powdered cocoa. Hey, Paul, was there a gas station nearby? Yeah, you passed one on the way. All right, go ahead and drive down to the gas station. Get some powdered cocoa, some hot dogs, some hot dog buns. I don't know, ketchup, relish, and I guess some lighter fluid? Okay. Don't forget bug spray. Oh yeah, yeah. Bug spray, I guess. You gather up all your supplies. Dump them on top of Lowry, close the trunk. Drive on back to where we were, and then up to the edge of the woods. Okay, there you are at the edge of the woods. You're not sure if this is where the motorcycle went in, but let's be honest. Uh... Yeah, we don't really care. So, can we take the car off road, or... It can transform. Oh, it can? Into what? It can. That was in that handout that you didn't read, but the car can turn into walker mode. It sprouts these long, spindly legs that can be used to navigate tight terrain or weave through traffic or whatever. Oh, okay. Sweet. Well, then just transform and walk into the woods, then. Paul, I use my cyborg brain to scan for Wi-Fi signals to see if I can find that motorcycle. Do I detect anything? I succeed by zero. There's, like... Tons of little shacks and cottages out here. You could throw a stone and probably hit a meth lab, so there's dozens, if not hundreds of hits. Ah, shoot. Wait a minute, meth labs? On my watch? To be honest, there's more than you can handle, and they don't really respect the cops. Well, we'll see about that. Stroll on down to the nearest shack. All right, you pull up next to a seedy-looking little den. Hop out of the car and bang on the door. A greasy-looking dude in track pants opens up. Oh, crap. He slams the door. Hey! Hey! Are you doing crime in there? I succeed by two to listen through the door. You hear a bunch of shouting in Russian, then a toilet flushing. The door opens again. Uh, sorry. I just had to... Uh, sneeze. Your sneeze sounds just like a toilet. Yes. I have family over. Cool. Cool. Hey, do you guys want to come out and roast marshmallows with us? Uh, no. I really must be going. It's very late for marshmallows. Put my foot in the door. Oh, uh, well, then you won't mind if I come in and use your bathroom. Step inside. You see two guys. One's holding a wheelbarrow full of meth, and the other is trying to shovel that meth into the toilet. Hey, you guys are doing crime. Oh, I cannot believe you guys doing crime. In my own house, too. What a betrayal. I think I've seen enough here. You two, back of the car, now. Roll intimidation. I assist. How do you assist? Pull out my gun and start freaking out. Get in the car! He said get in the car! Drop my gun, pick it back up, wave it around frantically. Why aren't you guys in the car? I pass by two? I pass by four. Okay. They throw their hands up, slowly back their way to the police car, open the door, and then shut themselves in the back. Turn to the first guy we met. Wow, man. I'm really sorry you had to learn your brothers are criminals like this. That super sucks. Oh, but hey, now that we're your only friends around, how about we go roast marshmallows together? He looks at you and slowly says, Yeah, I guess I could roast marshmallows now. Great. Officer Elvis, let Lowry out of the trunk. I go and I get that lady from the back. Uh, hey, tracksuit, could you get some lawn chairs? What happened? Did we arrest more people? Yeah, these dudes were doing a ton of crime. Well, what were they doing? Like drugs and stuff? It's all inside. I go inside. Yeah, there's a whole wheelbarrow of meth in there. A dude in a tracksuit squeezes by you holding some lawn chairs. 
Wow. Get a plastic bag from the kitchen and then start shoveling the meth into it. All right, that's going to take a little bit. Tracksuit comes out with his lawn chairs. Yeah, just set those up over there. And then I start setting up a fire. Squeeze out a bunch of lighter fluid and then try to light it. No, no, you have to start with making small kindling first. I know how to start a fire. I'm an architect, you know. Oh, really? You know, I thought you looked like that guy from TV. Yeah, that's me. Designed every house, shack, and run-down mobile home in this place. You're also a cop? Yeah, I have a gambling problem. Well, regardless, you need small kindling. You can't just light the big logs first. I could start a fire. I know how. The problem is there's no electrical outlets out here. Lauer, you finish shoveling that meth into a bag. It's about the size of your torso. Okay. Wow. How are they manufacturing this? They're probably just middlemen. You don't see a lab or anything. Take it outside. Mason, what should I do with all this? If I put it in the trunk, I'm not going to fit in there anymore. Uh, just stash it in the glove compartment with the rest of the evidence. Do you see how big this is? Oh my god, do I have to do everything? Tracksuit, light the fire! I have a white phosphorus grenade if that helps. Please, please don't. Take the bag from Lowry. Dump the drugs in the grass until the bag is small enough to fit in the glove compartment. There, see? Wow, Mason, I don't know what we'd do without you. Tracksuit gets the fire going. All right, perfect, perfect. Get out the marshmallows, heat up the cocoa, roast some hot dogs, get settled in. So guys, who wants to share scary stories? Oh, I do, I do. I succeed by three to tell a scary story. What's it about? I don't know. Uh, a headless police officer. But he's still alive. Wow. That was a pretty good story, Elvis. Pretty scary. It was so scary, I can't even remember the details. I know, right? Me either. You really just kind of got to feel that one out. Okay, so here's my story. One night. On a night just like tonight, I get called into a suspected homicide, but the victim isn't dead. And while I'm talking to him, he scratches himself, and then he explodes into horrific black tentacles. It's the worst thing I've ever seen! Point at the lady in the net. What happened to your husband today, lady? What happened? Did that happen to my husband? Yes! Why did that happen? Is that what happened? You're right, I am gonna get fired when I file that report. The lady goes all quiet. It's gonna sound so stupid. I guess it sounds like maybe it's nanomachines. Is that a thing? Do we have that technology? Paul, I roll knowledge. Success by zero. Are nanomachines a thing? Yes, but it's incredibly expensive, it's illegal for civilian use, and it's insanely unlikely that a redneck in the stacks would have access to that kind of thing. That's dumb. There's no way that guy could afford nanomachines. He's probably a ghost. No way, he can't be a ghost. Ghosts are see-through. Look, lady, you can either tell us how your husband became a corporeal ghost, or we can sit here, eating marshmallows, telling ghost stories, until my shift is up and I have to book you for murder and drug possession too, just because I can. Give me persuasion. Okay, succeed by zero. Well, my husband signed a deal with the landlord. He did a few tests, and now we don't have to pay rent anymore. I rolled to see if she's lying. I passed by three. Elvis, it's not even really an ability in this system. We're not playing D&D. You don't get the sense motive. Well, then how do I know if she's lying, Paul? Use your common sense. And barring that, there's an actual mind-reading power in this system. Ah, oh, heck. I knew I should have got that. How about you, Tracksuit? Does any of this line up at all? I don't know personally, but I've heard rumors. Who is this guy? I mean, who's your landlord? His name is John Ratberg. John Ratberg. Elvis. Use your hacker powers to see where we can find this John Ratbird. I succeed by one on computers. Where is this guy? On Facebook? He's the landlord. He lives at the office and the address is public. Okay, so, well, then I, I pull up the source code for this website and then show that to Mason. I found him, sir. Thank you, Officer Elvis. This looks very technical. All right, ma'am. You've been helpful and you didn't successfully kill your husband. So I guess I can let you off with the warning and also this lifetime of post-traumatic stress. Tracksuit goes, What about my friends? I was cooperative. No. You're selling drugs. You're messing up this neighborhood, dude. If this lady wants to kill her husband, then that's her personal business between her and her husband. But you guys are killing wives, and husbands, and children, and dogs that maybe don't know what they're getting into. You might be polluting the groundwater. Not really sure on that one. I don't know a lot about biodegradability, but the plastic bags that you're putting your stuff in? 
That is polluting the oceans. So you got a long way to go, guy, before I can let your friends off with the warning. But because you helped out, here, hand him a bag of marshmallows. He looks like he just got a rock for Christmas. All right, we got to bounce. Larry, toss your stuff in the trunk. We got a John Ratberg to talk to. But first, we got to drop these guys off downtown. What am I supposed to write in the report if we just let the murder suspect go? Just uh, make it up. I don't know, make up a story? I guess that will be easier. All right, while you guys are dropping off your perps, I'm going to go drop off this brownie tray in the kitchen. So go ahead and refill your waters. I'll be right back. You guys don't think we're bad cops, do you? Well, Elvis, we haven't done a single thing right, procedurally. Well, I don't mean that. Larry, I don't know a single thing about police procedure. It really shows in how you play, Mason. I mean, we just let that tentacle monster get away. We were so obviously supposed to go after it. All right, I'm back. Paul, you didn't plan on us knowing what we were doing, did you? No. That'd be stupid. I'd never plan that. It's not like we have real-life police training. Were we supposed to follow that tentacle monster? I mean, yeah, but I knew it was more likely that you'd get bogged down in some kind of alternative nonsense. I actually planned that little drug bust before the game started. Dang, Paul, am I getting that predictable? Well, not exactly predictable, Mason. I just know the broad strokes. Are you at least enjoying the strokes, Paul? Yeah, you guys are doing great. Except you, Larry. You've been stuck in the trunk most of the game so far. I'm doing the best I can. Well, consider doing better. You're the one who put me in the trunk, Mason. And so help me, I will put you in another trunk inside another car. I don't think that car would be street legal. I'm the police. I say what's street legal. You could fit another car inside of a dump truck. It's no good if you can see sky. Just put a tarp over it. Okay, I guess. So where were we? Well, when last we left off our intrepid cyborg cop heroes, you tried to arrest a tentacle man and failed, so you arrested some drug dealers instead. You go back to the station, file some paperwork, and head home. Sneak out some of the drugs I confiscated. Give me concealment. Oh, this explains a lot. Pass by two. All right, you walk out with some illegal drugs. All right, take it home to my girlfriend. Hey, baby, guess who's home? Hi, baby. And guess what I brought? Ah, uh, baby, you're the best. You always come through for me. Yeah, illegal drugs. Thank you so much, baby. I'm going to do them right now. Actually, uh, before you do, could you do the dishes? Ah, uh, baby, now I'm going to do them later. Yeah, but... I, I promise I'm going to do them later, I promise. Baby, you've been saying that for like a week now. They're not so bad. They're really starting to pile up. Maybe we can do illegal drugs after we do the dishes? Oh, baby, I'll do it later. You got me all excited for nothing. Yeah, I, d I didn't really think about this. Man, you know how the drug PSAs, you know, you do the drugs and they make you sad? And when I started doing them, I was thinking, like, I am already sad. But then you met me, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, you're not such a big catch either. Oh, uh, come on, baby. That's not fair. I got those illegal drugs for you. You know, you know what I had to do to get those? No, baby, what you have to do. Well, I kind of just walked out with them. But any, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that that PSA should have showed our apartment. There's like old food laying around. And what is this milk? How long's this milk been out? Yeah, I've been thinking about throwing that away. Oh, okay. I'll just leave it here then. So you're going to do these illegal drugs or what? I don't know. I'm feeling kind of depressed. I got to interrogate some guy tomorrow. I don't know, maybe I'll do some illegal drugs tomorrow. Oh, you say that every day. You say that about the dishes. How is mine worse? I didn't say it's worse. It's not a competition. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry, baby. It's okay. It's okay. So you're going to do some illegal drugs? You know, illegally? No, I'm going to go to bed. All right, fine. More for me then. I'm going to stay up for a while and hallucinate about a giant crab stealing my eyebrows. All right, you do that. Sounds fun. I'll see you when I wake up. Sweet dreams, baby. Mwah. Good night. Oh, shoot. What is this wet patch I stepped in? Great. Lowry, what do you go home to? Go home. Cast Twitter from my phone to my TV. Stay up for another three hours reading political opinions that I disagree with. Try to go to bed. I can't because I'm angry. Go to my gardening blog. I don't actually garden, so I post political rants. Hey, guys. I just wanted to say that cops are stupid. They're all ugly and dumb and have terrible sleep patterns and low self-esteem. You get a reply saying that you wouldn't say that if you knew some cops. Raffle copter. Little do they realize, they'll never know until they dox me. Elvis, what do you do at home? I still live with my parents, so I burst in. 
Hey guys! Man, have I had a crazy day! You are not gonna believe it! Your dad sits up in bed and goes, Elvis, it's 5 a.m. You work the night shift. I know, but you know how I like to unwind and have a little conversation after work? Yeah, can't we do this before you go to work? I guess, but then my day hasn't started, Dad. Okay, alright, yeah, that lines up. Uh, so alright, what happened today? Well, while I was looking for spaghetti, a man burst into tentacles. We think he had nanites. Oh, I think your cousin had that. No, no, I think he had rabies. I could have sworn it started with an N. No, it was definitely rabies. So, Elvis, did you look at all into finding a new place, or...? No, rent these days is crazy. I can't afford that. Well, maybe if you stop buying those trading cards... No, no, no. Because they're costing you, what, per week? I mean, not as much as rent would. Right, okay. I am going to go talk to a landlord tomorrow, though. Maybe I'll bring it up. Okay, good. That'd be great. So... Okay, good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And if they do, beat them with your shoe till their fannies turn black and blue. Yeah, good night, Elvis. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mom. Okay, you guys sleep through the day and your next night shift begins. You head into work. Hey, I have a crazy idea. How about we don't arrest anyone today? Just focus on tickets and citations. Have we asked the chief if we can have another car? He said it wasn't in the budget. Yeah, he said that about my idea for cup holders in the back seat. I think he just doesn't like ideas. Maybe if we do a bunch of citations, we can earn enough money to get cup holders. Or even a second car. That's really ridiculous, Lowry. We'd have to give out thousands of dollars of citations, and you know the chief is just going to snort it all up his nose. Yeah, the prices on his allergy meds are crazy. I hope I never get allergies like that. That poor man. You guys ought to get cyborg noses. The only time mine ever acts up is when I click a funny pop-up and it becomes a botnet, but then I just format the hard drive and everything's fine. So anyway. You guys make small talk a while, then hit the road. On your way down to the landlord's office, you pull up behind a familiar looking motorcycle. A guy with a flat top haircut and a leather jacket is riding it. Hey, that's the guy. Which guy? You know, the guy who chased after that tentacle man? I didn't see any of that, Mason. I was locked in the trunk. Oh, right. Elvis, that's that guy! Man, that's a nice motorcycle. I bet he's got money. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That he's friends with the DA and will get us fired if we pull him over? Well, that's what I'm thinking now. Man. What were you thinking before? That he could probably afford a parking ticket? Maybe just be super nice to him. If he feels embarrassed like it's his fault, we'll probably be fine. All right, flash the siren. He takes off. Hey! Ah, shoot. Put the pedal down and chase him. Get on the speaker. Sir! I am very sorry about this, but I have to pull you over. More polite. He's rich. Uh, we could discuss it over coffee or tea. This is terribly embarrassing for all of us. He turns off into the stacks. Follow him. It's a pretty sharp turn. Give me a driving roll. Pass by zero. All right, you make the turn. Seems like he's trying to lose you. I'll even pay for the coffee. Don't say that. If we can't get cup holders, that's not in the budget. Never mind. He zips between a tight spot in the stacks and starts driving down an alley. Switch to robot mode. The car hops up on its skinny little robot legs and turns sideways to get you down the alley. I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Damn it, Elvis. Elvis falls out of the seat and lands on his window. Elvis, if I report you for this, they're going to make us all retrain. Well, you guys all skipped the first training session. So did you, Lowry. I don't see you complaining. They told me I would have to run. I mean, I'll just hack the new one, too. I'm not going to go back to cop school. Flat top guns it. He's trying to get away from you. Give me another driving roll. Ah, heck, fail by two. You're starting to lose him. Roll my window down some. Elvis, you're gonna fall out and die. It's fine. I wrap the seatbelt around my waist. The way it's supposed to be worn, or? No, like a rope tied around my waist. Okay. I lean out the window, and my watch transforms into a plasma gun. It does? I shoot my plasma gun at the motorcycle. All right, you do that, and to your surprise, the blast bounces back in your direction, missing the cop and hitting one of the stacks. Oh, he's got an energy reflective shield. I saw that in the equipment list. Does that work on regular bullets? No. Then here, I toss Elvis my gun. Get on the speaker. Sir, I'm really sorry about that plasma shot. Please don't tell the DA. Mason, I don't know how to use this. Sigh. Lean out the window and shoot at the motorcycle with my 9mm. All right, give me a roll. 
I miss and I hit someone's house. So much paperwork incoming. Elvis, how can you not know how to use a gun? It's the only part of the training I went to. Well, you shoot him. I'm driving. Give me a driving roll. Ugh, pass by two. You start to catch back up to him. I take another shot. Wow, okay. You hit someone's window. Sorry. I hope when this guy pulls over, he finds this extremely embarrassing on someone's behalf. I'm embarrassed, are you embarrassed? You get used to it. That's a lie. You never get used to it. Pull us in closer. Elvis, use your nose nets. Give me a driving roll. Pass by three. You pull the car right over him. He looks up, grabs something out of his jacket, and chucks it at the car. I catch it. I pass by four. It's a grenade. Ah, oh, heck. I guess what else would it be? Well, you're holding it. Are you going to do something with it? Throw it back at the guy. Oh, oh, wow. Uh. Damn it, Elvis. It bounces off the inside of the car and lands in the back seat with Lowry. Damn it, Elvis. It explodes. Pop. It was a flashbang. Lowry, you're blind. Damn it, Elvis. Let the guy pull away a little so that doesn't happen again. I've got an idea. Paul, does his motorcycle have Wi-Fi? This is the future, so yes, it does. I try to log on to his bike remotely with my cyborg senses. I pass by three. You brute force the password. His password was cool dude. Turn on the front brake. His motorcycle comes to a violent stop, sending him tumbling into the gravel head over heels. Bring the car down and hop out. Sir, are you okay? I am terribly sorry about all of this, sir. But some of your actions have been criminal to the extent that we might have to ask your lawyer if you could have some community service. Jump out and cuff him. All right, he's starting to get up as you leap on him. Give me a grappling roll. Oh, uh... All right, he spins it around on you and locks you up with your own cuffs. Whoa, 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 man. Uh, can't we talk about this? No, we cannot. Take these off of me and put them on you. Stumble out of the car. Did we get him? I can't see. Look, man, I didn't even do anything wrong. No, I'm not sure if that's true. We definitely got you on speeding. No way, man. I was following the speed limit, like, most that time. Well, we could always consult the camera. We recorded the entire thing. I thought you always turned that camera off. No, I don't. The camera's off right now. I got it all recorded. You're so busted, Mr. Flattop. Don't objects in the camera move faster than they appear? Unlock Elvis from the cuffs. Well, we adjust for that math, sir. This is the future. Computers do all kinds of calculations. It didn't even do anything dangerous, man. You flashbanged a cop in a moving vehicle, jerk. Yeah, I gotta give you a ticket for indecent exposure, at least. Try to cuff him again. Ah! He takes the cuffs from you and chucks them, like, 300 meters out. Whoa! Paul, uh, check this guy up. Does he look banged up at all after that ridiculous motorcycle crash? Well, his clothes are messed up and he's covered in dirt, but now that you look at him, there's not a scratch on him. Okay, sir, I can see you're obviously some kind of... Shoot the gas tank on his motorcycle. Whoa! Dude! My baby! Oh, not my baby, man! Why would you do that? Oh, she's my favorite color! You're some kind of stranded is what you are. Freaky super strength aside. Hey, wait a minute. I recognize you guys. You were there when that guy turned into tentacles. Yeah, and so were you. And you were speeding. And speeding is against the law, perp. No, you guys don't understand. I got valuable information, man. I got the word that the landlord is behind everything. Yeah, that's not new information for us. We heard that too. Whoa. So we both got the same information. This must be like fate. What are the odds? I'm fated to work with you guys. I mean, we're the only cops that cover this whole area. The, the only other option is you would have never seen us. You'd have been luckier that way. Real quick, just tell us what information you know, so I know that we know the same thing. Well, I learned that the landlord's behind everything. I've been following this whole operation, man. I I'm just about to the root of it. He signs people up for a free experiment, and then they get their rent for free. And you know what they say about free stuff, man. Anytime you get free stuff, you gotta sit through a three-hour marketing pitch. And by my count, that's at least six hours worth of marketing, man. We gotta stop him. It's inhuman. Yeah, that's kind of what we know. So I'm glad I met you, man. It means we can work together. Do you have a badge? I mean, I guess I could buy one. Oh? Oh yeah? How much does that cost? I don't know. I mean, how much is one worth? Okay, well, you also have to go through special training, just like we did. Yeah, and no cheating. If too many people cheat, they'll figure out the security exploits. Well, I can just pay to say I got credentials, right? Paul, is that right? Can he just pay to become a cop in this city? 
unofficially, sadly, yes. Uh, yes, he can do that. Though not a lot of people do that because there's no point. Okay. Well, that all checks out then. Just, uh, I guess leave the bribe with me. All right, man. Uh, just give me your bank number and I'll send it over. My bank number? Well, could, could you just write me a check? Yeah, sure, dude. Uh, wait, actually, no, I don't have my checkbook on me. You guys are terrible. You're supposed to do crimes in cash. Uh, no, nah, man, that's dumb. Cash gifts are taxable. The real trick is to offer a low-interest loan for an insider trade. The taxes are way more lenient on that, and the profit is legit, so it doesn't need laundering. Oh. Can, can I have one of those? Sure, man. Yeah, I can hook you up. Anything for my vigilante confederates, bruh. Great. Now we're worse than criminals. We're city officials. I'm gonna toss my soda can. Anyone else empty? Yep, right here. Okay, be right back. All right, I'm back. So, Paul, I've been thinking. Aren't we basically about to investigate a civil infraction? I mean, aside from the cyborg that we just met, we're gonna go investigate a leasing contract and some kind of medical testing deal. Is that not a job for the FBI? Or the FDA? Or, or the somebody? Nah. In the far-flung future, the FBI's got more important things to worry about. Like, uh, aliens. Self-aware androids, I guess. I bet they'd investigate the nice neighborhood. The nice neighborhood has lawyers, Lowry. Maybe we can get the abominations to wander into the nice neighborhoods and pee on their lawns and stuff. And then that'll get the FBI in, and then we can go take a nap. I like the way you're thinking, Elvis. Well, Mason, that does sound like a pretty typical way for this group to end a campaign. Look, Paul, if you're telling me that there's a dragon terrorizing the country, the question I'm going to ask is, why does the king only hire three dudes, and then why does he hire another three dudes who compete with us and piss us off at every turn? Well, you guys were independent contractors that game. You made a bid to kill the dragon, and then a second group came in and bid underneath you. I'll consider it worked out pretty well in the end. Elvis, you guys abandoned the job, then managed to find a way in the Fey Court in the mistaken belief that the Fey Court was a court of law. And it wasn't at first. Royalty does have the authority to make judgments, Paul. That king should have known better. You mess with adventurers, and sooner or later they level up enough to ask the gods for revenge. Yeah, and I don't hate the way that campaign turned out. I just didn't expect that the other team would claim the kill, and then you guys would get paid anyway on the basis of damages and emotional suffering. We had to jump through a lot of hoops to rig that case. It was an adventure in paperwork. We didn't really do any paperwork. We disqualified the king's lawyer for sewer service. Which is funny, because we were the ones who served the lawsuit. I think that guy was the chancellor or something, wasn't he, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, he helped organize the city sewers. So the Fae all agreed that guy was dirty. I just think where I went wrong is, I tried to set up a traditional Slay the Dragon campaign, and this is just not the right group. It was a great campaign though, Paul. I mean, even if all the plans you started with sucked. So anyway, we've met this cyborg. Yes indeed, you went to investigate a murder, the murder victim burst into tentacles, somebody blamed the landlord, and this apparently unkillable cyborg was at the scene. So anyway, dude, I was about to go down to that guy's office and like, Hang him off the rooftops, you know, like Batman. And he'd be all like, no, please don't kill me, man. It was the penguin that did it. It's almost never the penguin. Nobody likes the penguin. He's not cool. Well, the Joker wouldn't do weird medical experiments on people, dude. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's funny if you know why he's doing it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it becomes a joke if you figure it out. Oh, this guy came in on a motorcycle and he's just holding it and walking around with it now, right? That's correct, Lowry. Okay, does it have a license plate? It does! I rolled to check what state he's from. Is this a local plate? Oh, I failed by three. It is a local plate. So you're from out of town, are you? Huh? Why? Do you guys not get Batman cartoons around here? Wait. I mean, no, we wouldn't, because, like, Batman should be public domain by now, right? Yeah, man. All the cartoons are available for free now. I stream them from some website. I don't know why, but that feels weird to me. Ask Dispatch to run this guy's license plate. Yeah, Officer Lowry, it looks like this plate belongs to a Bartholomew Molyneux. He's the son of Google Molyneux, the current owner of Google. The owner of Google changed his first name to Google. Yeah, it's all the rage with company owners these days. Like how the owner of Johnson & Johnson changed his name to Johnson Johnson, middle name Ampersand. Isn't Google a subsidiary of Alphabet? Shut up, Elvis. So, Flat Top, what's your real name? Uh, John... Johnson? You mean like the owner of Johnson & Johnson? Never heard of him, man. So, hey, 
Mr. Johnson, you were saying you wanted to help us interrogate the landlord, right, Mr. John Ratberg? Where did John Ratberg live? Elvis, we figured that out already. You were the one who looked it up? Oh, right. Well, anyway, Johnson, we're going to head down there soon, but we need a little bit more evidence gathering before we spring the trap. Is that going to be okay? Oh, I guess, man. We don't want the trail to go cold, though, do we? Well, that's the thing about police work. See, sometimes the trail goes colder if you move too fast. I tell you what. Meet me by the gas station down the block tomorrow at around this time, and we're all going to be ready. All right, man. I guess you guys are the cops after all. Y'all think of the questions I want answered, and then uh, maybe I'll get a grappling hook and some rope and stuff for the rooftops. All right, you do that. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. And away he goes, walking down the road, cradling his motorcycle in his arms. Elvis, can you look online and find the Bartholomew Molyneux? You got it, Lowry. I passed by one. He's the son of Google's owner. You find him on Facebook. Pull up the page source code. I've hacked him, guys. There he is. Where is he, Paul? His primary residence is uptown in a big mansion. Of course, he's got dozens of other homes in other countries and a sprawl of Airbnb rentals. Man, investigating the rich sucks. They got overseas accounts, foreign addresses, lawyers. This all sounds complicated. I bet we could get just as good credit for arresting a poor person and saying that they did it. We owe it to ourselves to be better cops than that, Mason. Officer Lowry, are you not the cop who cried openly during every coffee break? You make such a scene, and it is so embarrassing, and you want to talk about the dignity of the force. I do it every day, and you never ask what's wrong. That is not true. I asked one time, and it turned out you were sad because someone posted a TikTok video where a dog died. Oh. Well, that was a one-time thing, and that was legitimately sad. Usually I'm thinking about the state of society. That is bullcrap and you know it. Name me one thing you know about society. I know lots of things about society, Mason. For example, I know that rent is too expensive. And how would you fix it, Lowry? You asked for one thing and I gave you one thing. How dare you escalate to demanding two things? How do we fix that anyway? Rent is too expensive. My parents are trying to get me to move, but I feel like I can't find a better situation than living rent-free with my parents. The rent situation is like zero value added to what I'm at right now, but with more cost. There's privacy. Privacy is just another word for loneliness. Do you guys want roommates? Uh, I already have one. Actually, wait, do you do dishes? No. Then no. I like to turn the lights off and sit in silence, so you'd really harsh the vibe. Well, I guess we're never going to solve the rental problem. So anyway, does this Bartholomew Molyneux kid look anything like the guy we just tried to arrest? No, he does not. Ah, heck. Maybe he is a poor person after all. He just stole that motorcycle. Do we have a stolen vehicle bulletin or anything? Not for one of those motorcycles. Those are pretty rare. And also, that one was modified with technology that civilians can't normally get. All right. Uh, Elvis, could you do a reverse image search on that guy's face or something? Uh... You don't have any images of that guy. He's still walking home, right? Yep, he was last seen on foot carrying a motorcycle. Run after him. Hey, hey, uh, flat top, J uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'm really excited to be working together. Could we get a selfie for my scrapbook? He turns around. Uh, yeah, sure, man, cool. So we're really doing this, huh? Yeah, we're doing it like peas in a pod. Take the picture. Jeez. Okay, and one more from the side. Profile view, please. All right, man. Like, look away like I'm thinking about something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like an album cover. Okay, cool. Okay, and one more from the front, just for safety. All right. Hey, can I see him? Sure. You photograph really well. You're a lot taller than me, though. Yeah, it's crazy hard getting used to, man. I'm, like, way up here. Okay, see you tomorrow, bud. And now you have your photos. All right, reverse image search. Pass by two. You can find one public photo at the birthday party of some kind of social media porn star. He's wearing a fake mustache. Just one photo? What's the name on this? He appears in the magazine as Roger McRoger, and the magazine lists him as the best dressed at the party. Alright, bring up the source code. Show it to Mason. This is all the hacking I could do, sir. The man's a ghost. Based on the graphic nature of this party, I'd say he's not in a shell. That is an excellent reference to a cartoon that came out presumably over a hundred years ago, sir. Thanks, Elvis. I'm glad you understood it, because for the time period this is, it is rather dated. Given his illegal weapons, I'd say he's a Ghost in the Shell standalone complex first assault recon online, Officer Mason. Okay. You've totally lost me. It was a game based on the Ghost in the Shell franchise, sir. It also wasn't very successful, which makes it far less likely you'd understand what I'm talking about. But I just thought it was funny the title was so long. Let's try and stay focused on the task ahead of us. Right. Paying rent. Not that far ahead. 
I meant more in the immediate, before our shift ends future. Well, heck, I guess we'll just drive uptown to the Google Mansion. It's not really in your jurisdiction. Neither is Lowry's mom! But that didn't stop me from sending her flowers on her birthday, Lowry. She asked about you. You don't understand. I can never get off the phone with her. Well, all right, we're going uptown. If another cop asks, tell him that we're lost uh, and that we're also chasing a poor person. Hang on, let me get a cover story. Call up dispatch. Dispatch, we are in hot pursuit of a poor person. Over. A poor person? You have a description? Yes. The car's all beat up, and they're probably some kind of ethnic minority, and they don't have a lawyer. What kind of car are they driving, Officer Elvis? Tell him a sprint car. A sprint car with big old mud flaps and a bumper sticker that says, I heart alcohol. Any information on why the pursuit? I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out when we arrest him. Roger that. You're authorized to use lethal force. Okay, that's airtight. I guess we'll go uptown. Sure, you head on up to the nice part of town. Basically, it's a lot of rolling farmland and rural stuff with yards separated by increments of miles. That sort of country living has a lot of appeal for the upper society in your cramped city world. So when we pull up to the mansion, is there like 100 acres of rolling fields between the fence and the front door? Yeah, and some wooded stuff between that. Ugh. Okay, maybe this will work. Ring the fence doorbell. You hear an answer through an intercom. Good afternoon. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no. This is the police. We're in hot pursuit of a poor person. We think he jumped the fence and ducked off into the woods in your yard. I see. Well, not to worry. The automatic security drones will find him and incinerate the body. Oh. Okay. Well. It's my understanding that murdering trespassers is permitted within the law. I mean, I'm sure it is. But we really wanted to give this guy a fine. The department depends on those tickets, you know. Our department does? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously not like a department in a bad part of town would, but you know, we have a quota. We're supposed to ticket a certain number of drunk driving cases and stuff to remind people that there are police out here. It was in the city council meeting. I don't know if you were there. Give me persuasion, Mason. Pass by two. Well, I suppose if it will help you meet your quota, there's no harm in powering down the murder drones for an hour or so. Thanks, boss. It really means a lot. The gate opens up. Okay, drive in. So, listen up, guys. Gotta get in that mansion and find Bartholomew Molyneux, and then... Uh... I don't think we can arrest him if we don't have evidence he did a crime. Shoot. Uh, I should've asked if his motorcycle was stolen. If he was guilty, he's just gonna lie anyway. This is fine. Yeah, except now we're here impersonating cops from another jurisdiction, and I don't know for sure what we're doing. I thought I'd have a plan by the time we got in, but I didn't expect they'd just let me in. Well, let's just go with your first instinct, Mason. All right. Uh, okay, I guess just go park the car outside, get out and start walking around the building. Is there a garter or anything out here? Well, you work night shift, remember? But yeah, there's a custodian or something working in the yard. Okay, walk up to him. Hey, dude, uh, I was wondering, do you happen to know where Bartholomew Molyneux is right now? He goes, uh, I guess I could get one of the butlers for you. No, no, uh, don't do that. See? I think he did a crime, but I kind of lied to get in here, so I was hoping I could just climb through one of the windows and, like, catch him doing the crime. And I think he's doing the crime right now. Oh, really? Are you allowed to do that? Well, I don't think so. Unless he's doing a crime. See, because there's rules about probable cause and stuff, but I kind of skipped some of that training. So look, look, uh, just from one working stiff to another, I don't suppose you could help me out? Give me another persuasion roll. Pass by one. The guy goes... Well, I guess it is good to see the Molyneux family being held accountable for... anything? I didn't think the police ever investigated them. Yeah, that's usually more of an FBI thing, and then there's never quite enough crime to justify a court case. Anyway, can I borrow your ladder? Uh, sure, I'll get one from the shed. We really are gonna get slaughtered in court, though. They're gonna look up our past history and everything, and it is not gonna look good. See, this is the problem with police by humans. Of course, no cop is going to be perfect. Climb up the ladder, look through the window. Do I see anybody? Yeah, you see a scruffy young guy sitting in a beanbag chair. There's police action film posters all over the walls. He's wearing some kind of VR helmet. So anyway, I mean, like, people make mistakes all the time. And in the heat of the moment, it can be really hard to make a good judgment call. Smash the window with my nightstick. The glass explodes into sharp fragments. The guy shouts, whoa, is someone there? There's a pause, and he takes off his helmet and turns around. Whoa! Step inside. You cut your legs up on the glass. Oh, jeez. You could have just knocked, man. Think I'd fall for that? 
You know why we introduced no-knock warrants? It's because criminals always destroy the evidence. You think I'd give you a chance to flush yourself down the toilet? Huh, perp? I, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Where's your I... motorcycle, dude? I noticed your little cherry red beauty isn't in the garage, because I checked. Oh, it's, it's, it's out getting some maintenance, man. No, it isn't. Elvis, get up here. All right, climb the ladder. Okay, you cut up your legs coming in. Oh, jeez. Elvis, show him what we got on his motorcycle. Pull up a picture of his motorcycle from, like, Google Images or something and turn on the source code. Show it to him. I hacked this. We got your number, Mr. Molineo. Whoa, guys. All right, look, I'm not the bad guy here, okay? Well, we'll let the judge be the the arbiter of that decision. I played the fifth, man. That means you can't make me testify. Drag him to the window. All right, perp. I'm going to need you to be really careful because there's broken glass everywhere. Lowry, come up here. Help me pick this guy up and, and get him over the glass so he doesn't get hurt. All right. So here you got to Dude, dude. We could just go out the front door. It's, it's no, fine. I'll go. The front, I... door, the front door isn't cool. I really wanted to throw you out the window and have Lowry catch you, but then he wouldn't do it right and you'd both get hurt. Oh, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, well, I could have Jeeves put out a crash pad. Really? You got a crash pad for this sort of thing? Well, not for this specifically, dude, but I really like action film, so I got a bunch of props and special effects stuff. Do you want to blow up my room while we leave? Yeah. Yeah, I do. How, how long is that going to take? They said they're going to reactivate the death robots in a couple of hours. Oh, it won't take long, man. I got people. Just hold down that button on the wall. I succeed by six to tell if he's lying. Paul, is he lying? Elvis, we have been over this. Shut up, Elvis. Don't ruin this for me. Push the button. Yeah. Hey, Jeeves? Yes, sir. Could you set the crash pad down below my window and rig up my room to explode? Maybe set up a camera while you're at it, too, man. Of course, sir. Man, arresting rich people is cool. Only when you arrest the cool ones like me, man. Uh, if you arrested my dad, it'd just be a boring walk to the car, then he'd have your family killed or whatever. Well, joke's on you, I don't really have a family. Me either. I'd feel worse if you gave me a family. All that pressure to succeed. I love my family, please don't hurt them. No, you guys are cool, I'm cool, don't worry about it. And much quicker than you'd expect, the small crew rushes in, rigs up a bunch of explosives, and then throws out a crash pad below the window. It's almost like they've done this before. Sir, may I ask who these men are, the butler inquires. Oh yeah, yeah. These are some cops. I'm being arrested, Jeeves. Very well, sir. A crew member approaches you guys and says, All right, we're going to give you a signal. When we do, jump. And then we're going to light it up on the way out. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess. Do I jump too? Yeah, it's going to be a real explosion, so don't stay in here. Otherwise, we got to cancel it and reset the shot. Okay, so we all jump together. Got it. Larry, are you going to come up and jump? No, I'm good. Get in position. We're ready. They give you the signal. Leap out the window. The room explodes cinematically behind you in what you have to assume is a pretty cool shot. You land safely on the crash pad below. Wow! Best arrest of my life! I gotta do that again! <laughs> I know, man. But they gotta rebuild my room before we do that. Hey, when we're taking you out of here, do you think we could do like a car chase down the road? Heck yeah, man! Jeeves, get the crew! Have them get in the... Uh... He looks at your car. Looks like we're doing a retro thing. Get some of the older banged up cars. Can I see the footage on our jump? Sure. It looks pretty awesome for a single take and the fact you've never done this before. Is there any chance I could get a copy of that shot for my wallet? This looks great. Can I just have the whole footage? I gotta show my parents when I get home. The crew explains they'd love to, but the copyright is technically held by Google, so you gotta go through some legal avenues. Molyneux goes, Yeah, man, sometimes we sell this stuff as stock footage and whatever. I'll totally hook you up, but it'll take a day or two. Then they get you ready for a car chase, and they follow you all the way down to the street, shooting blanks and stuff at you. One of the drivers rolls his car over, but it looked intentional. The light and sparks and bullets bouncing off the car and post, man. It's pretty cool. All right. Pull off the road and start heading down to the station. Hey, man, where are we going? We gotta get back, you know? What? I thought you were under arrest. What? Were you serious about that? Yeah. You're some kind of illegal remote-controlled cyborg. That's not a crime. Allegedly? And even if it were, I didn't do it. Allegedly? Really? Because it was a super cool robot, and I was hoping to team up with it. Oh, you had me going, man. Well, yeah, that was me. I mean, you really had me worried. Aha! It was a trick, and now you just admitted that you're an illegal remote-controlled cyborg. Oh, man, you got me with cop psychology. Dang it. Oh, I should have known better. So cool, but such a bummer. Also, uh, I talked to my lawyer before, and he said it's not illegal to have a remote-controlled cyborg. Pal, I succeed by three to know if this guy's lying. 
Elvis, you can't think of a law in the books that says a remote-controlled cyborg is illegal. Unless it flies, in which case he has to register with the FAA. Hey Bart, can your robot fly? No man, I wish. I tried to get him to put rocket boots in it, but they kept telling me stuff about, like, balance and aerodynamics and something about getting the power core stable in the first place. Uh, it's all technical garbage, I don't know. Officer Mason, I am not sure this guy broke any laws. He threw a grenade at us, Elvis. Oh, yeah. Officer Mason, he may have broken at least one law. It's also illegal to trick out your motorcycle with reflective military hardware. Oh, yeah. Uh, my lawyer also talked to me about that. He said the bike was stolen, and also not to talk to you until he was present. So I kind of screwed up a lot already. Could we do a do-over? It's too late, guy. I got it all recorded. Mason, we definitely turned off the camera before we left our jurisdiction and broke into this guy's mansion without a warrant. No. No. Just repeat what you said when we get in the station, Mr. Molyneux, because it's already on record. And Lowry's an idiot, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't want to get yelled at by my lawyer again. How long is this ride? Get like a couple of hours? Because my lawyer is going to scold me for at least that long, man. No offense, I respect your craft and all, but if I'm going to flippantly ignore my guy and say I didn't do anything wrong, I want to like have it be partially true that I didn't do anything wrong. So I think I'm going to just stop telling you guys stuff for a little bit, okay? I mean, fine, if you don't want to be cool. No, I want to be cool. I want us to work together, man, but my lawyer, man. You know how lawyers are, right? You deal with lawyers all the time. Well, I work in a poor part of town, so all I know is the public defender. Oh, what's he like? Tired. Always tired. Yeah, the guy jokes about suicide basically all the time. He's a huge downer. Personally, I like him. I tried to invite him to hang out once or twice, but he always cancels on me. See, Lowry, the trick is you gotta hang out with him while he works. Because he's always working, see? And a lot of his clients actually are guilty, so mostly he's just doing paperwork and pleading. But once you spend about 15 minutes chatting with him about why he's never going to have kids and why everything he loves gets arrested, you realize that you're not going to hang out with him anymore. I do that and you still hang out with me. You're my co-worker, Lowry. They pay me to hang out with you. Well, you're not being paid enough for the suffering. You deserve a raise, but we both know you're never going to get one. Are you guys not making enough to live? I've been investing some and that's been a good side gig. Some of us have rent, Paul. And girlfriends who order out every single day. She's costing me everything, Paul. You should break up. Then I'll be alone, Paul. I'll move in with you. I need a place. No. I want a girl roommate. One that'll let me look at her boobs. So anyway, you guys get back to the station and throw Bartholomew in one of your cells. He goes, well, man, I thought you'd hook me up with a good cell. Do we have a good cell? This is as good as it gets. We don't have a good cell, Bart. This is a poor area. We barely have plumbing. Which reminds me, if you flush that toilet, make sure you jiggle the handle, otherwise it's going to run all night. Can I at least have a couch to lay down on? Do the prison cells in your area have couches? Yeah, and also Xbox and a vending machine, and a hotline to the governor, and also one to the DA. Could I actually get your guys' DA hotline, by the way? Uh, I'll look into that. I gotta go. Alright, so, before you guys even finish the paperwork, your police chief calls you and says, Mason, you idiot! What did you do?! You're going to have to be a lot more specific, sir. I mean, why did you arrest the Molyneux boy? I just got a call from the DA, the mayor, the governor, and the president of the country. The entire department has been laid off, and now we're all on a terrorist watch list. Oh, that is a lot worse than I thought it would be. They can pull strings you didn't even know existed. Each and every one of us is now banned from the micronation of Monte Carlo. We can't join a yacht club in any part of the known world, or step foot on a golf course from this point onward. What monumentally stupid gut instinct would lead you to try to arrest one of the most powerful and influential people in the world? In fairness, sir, he seemed kind of dumb and like he was enjoying it. And let's be real, my unit is definitely a threat to the public, so maybe that terrorist thing is warranted. Well, it's all over now. I hope you're happy. You're going to have to think of a new job to burden society with from now on, Officer Mason. Sorry, sir. Hang up the phone. Well, gentlemen, we are now unemployed. Scoop up Lowry's paperwork and toss it out the window. Hey, I like doing paperwork. Well, I like throwing it out the window. How can we always do what you like to do? Besides that had personal information, I'm supposed to shred that? Well, you gotta learn to like cooler things. Like working at a bowling alley, because that might be what's in our future. Paul, is this the game? Is the game over? No, no, no. There's still the mystery of the tentacle man, and you haven't even talked to the landlord. Sit tight, I'm gonna get some more water and we'll keep going.
All right, so here we go. You investigated a murder, the victim burst into tentacles, someone blamed the landlord, but you stopped to arrest one of the world's richest people and just lost your jobs. That's about as much as we can say without implicating ourselves for all the crimes we've committed so far, Paul. I mean, really, Lowry, can we say that we're criminals if the whole system is rigged? At this point, we're just good Samaritans. Well, at least we're not the most evil people in the world for once, Mason. Well, that's a hard value to measure. I know we're not usually a force for good, but in some of our games, we found people who are working for actual demons. Alvis, I'd estimate those people were equally evil to us. If anything, they're only guilty of being more organized than us, which is always their downfall because our logic never makes sense from their perspective. Our logic doesn't need to make sense, Lowry. In a role-playing game, the player characters are superhuman. Our dumb plans will never work for them, but it always shakes out for us. The term is plot armor. The story cares not for how it's driven, only that it's driven forward. So on that note, Mason, you return home to your girlfriend, now jobless. She says, welcome home, puppy. What did you bring me? Oh, uh, well, baby, you're not really going to like this, but I kind of got fired. Fired? What'd you do? Well, the whole department got fired, you know, it wasn't just me. Oh my god, they can't just do that. Well, actually, they can. I mean, they did. You know, I've been thinking, maybe this is a new chapter in our lives. We could start fresh, stop doing drugs, learn to bowl, get a job at a bowling alley. Are you crazy? I'm not going to stop doing drugs. Well, can we at least work at a bowling alley? Honey, you know I'm working hard on my podcast, and it's going to take off soon. We just have to wait. We're going to be rolling in the money soon. It's a saturated market, baby. Everyone's doing podcasts these days. Yeah, well, not everybody's doing a good one. Well, what's your podcast even about? I'm on episode 300 and you don't even remember! It's boring, baby. I lost track. How can you say that? It's about my day-to-day life, baby. You don't think my life is interesting? Oh, so it's another true crime podcast? Because it's not like there's not enough of those. Ugh, I can't talk to you when you're like this. When I'm like what? When I'm unemployed? Is that all I am to you? Just a paycheck? Here, here, come, come here. Take some illegal drugs. It'll take the edge off. Fine. I guess I can start my new job search after I'm done doing illegal drugs. Finally. At least now you have some free time. Alright, what do we got? I don't know. I got a baggie of something. I found it in the back of the dresser this morning. Oh, were you doing laundry? No, stupid. Well, how do we know this isn't laundry detergent? We bought some a long time ago. Where did that go? It's not laundry detergent. I tried it already. Wait, if you don't know what it is, how did you take it? Well, I just tried it every little way I knew. I snorted it, injected it, baked some into a cookie and ate it. I'm gonna be honest, that sounds a little dangerous, baby. Are there any cookies left? No, I only made the one. Why are you like this? You hear a knock at the door. Do I have to get that? Am I getting that? Of course I do. Paul, get the door. You answer the door and you see your new cyborg friend standing there. He says, hey, Officer Mason. He looks down at the bag in your hand. What are you holding there, man? Oh, this? I forgot I was holding this. This is baking soda for the fridge. Keeps the fridge fresh. Oh, cool. I've never seen the inside of a fridge before. I didn't know they needed powder. Yeah. Well, they do. And for your information, I'm not a cop anymore. Thank you, Bart. Well, hey man, it's John Johnson, remember? I don't care about your stupid fake name. From now on, the only thing I want to hear about you is your shoe size so I can get you the right bowling shoes. You haven't even got that job yet, baby. Well, it's all I really want to do, baby. I've said if I didn't make it as a cop, I'm going to work in a bowling alley. Well, hey man, what if I told you you could still work as a cop, but like a private cop? I don't want to be a security guard. That job sucks. Wait, are you hiring me? Can I live in the mansion and blow up your house again? Well, you blew up this guy's house? I'm having a job interview, baby. Let me talk to the man. I was thinking more like private eye, man. We'll get back on that tentacle mystery tomorrow. I mean, we did agree to meet tomorrow. I don't know. I'm still mad. You got me fired. Hey, dude, I know. I mean, once my lawyer got involved, he just kind of took over. You know? I told him it was too far, but it just got out of my hands. But I tell you what, how about I pay you triple your old salary, man? Triple salary? Is that not enough? I don't know how much you guys make. I could do quintuple salary. Or about this, let's just say an even seven figures. I'll, I'll do a million bucks a month. How's that? Uh, oh, and I'll throw in healthcare? Okay. I mean, you're really twisting my arm here, but I guess I could work for a million dollars plus healthcare. Should I wear a uniform or buy my own gun? Don't worry about that, man. I basically bought everything that was at the police station you worked at, including your personnel files, so... Basically, I'll show up with all your stuff in a duffel bag. Even the crappy beat-up police car? Yeah, we could do better, but I guess. Can you put cup holders in the back seat for Lowry? Sure, I could do that before your shift tomorrow night. 
Until then, think about any cool spy stuff you want. You could put in saw blades, machine guns, a jet engine. No, no, just the cup holders. All right, man, it's your car. Yes, sweet. See you tomorrow, John. Close the door. What was that all about, baby? It's about me getting enough money to buy my own bowling alley. Call up Lowry. Lowry, hello. Mason, it's late. I'm blogging about how glad I am our police department got shut down. Oh, well, then I've got terrible news for you. We have a new job, and it's our old job. Only we get paid a million dollars a month. Oh, boy. Paul, go on my message board and complain that all the irresponsible cops are being paid too much. Say they earn seven figures a month now. Other people say you're stupid and a liar. (laughs) I'm the only one who's real. Okay, Mason, I'm in. All right, I'm going to call Elvis. Elvis! Hello? Yeah, is this Elvis? Oh, God. Mason, I thought I'd never hear from you again. I've just been lying here crying since I got home. Okay, well, stop. We got our jobs back. Really? Did did you hear that on the internet? Because that's usually fake. There's this guy on a gardening forum who says the cops are getting paid seven figures a month, but that is such crap. I'm trying to tell him off, but he just posted a cartoon man making a stupid face at me, and I'm not sure if he's stupid or if I'm stupid. It can be both, Elvis. It can be both? Yeah, it can be both. Oh, well, that's so reassuring. I just, I just like to know where I stand. Be ready to work the usual shift tomorrow. I'll come pick you up. All right. Thanks, Mason. All right, I guess hit the sack and wait for tomorrow night. You go to bed. Did anyone else want to do anything before tomorrow? Leave a really bad review for employment at the old police department. Complain it took too long to shut down and that I should have been fired a lot sooner. Mason didn't even tell me about the money. So I guess wake up my parents, tell them I got my job back, then go back to bed. Okay, to bed you go. When work rolls around the next day, you're each greeted by your own limousines. Aw, sweet. Wait, Mason said he'd pick me up. Ask the driver, what's the password? Password, sir. The password for when a stranger comes to pick me up? Mason should have given you a password. I don't know, sir. Oh, okay, that's it. You check out. Hop in the limo. You're all driven to the gas station in your old jurisdiction. Waiting for you is Bart and his remote-controlled android, John Johnson. Hey, Mason, I was thinking... Should we come up with a better password for Stranger Danger than I don't know? I feel like that one's really easy to guess. What password for Stranger Danger? You know, we agreed if I don't recognize someone, they should know a password so I know that they're my friend. Oh, that. You said we should have a password and ask what it would be, and I said I don't know. And I'm saying that one's too easy to guess. What should the next one be? I don't care. All right, got it. Bart's hanging out near a purple motorcycle that's identical to his old red one. He's got it parked next to your old cop car. He goes, Hey dudes, I'm glad you made it. I'm really looking forward to seeing you use that wild cop psychology on that landlord today. I looked it up and I saw he lived in a one-story building. Then I got bored and started looking at naked pictures. I mean, we can't hang the dude from the roof like Batman, so I figured you guys would know what to do. Point to our cop car. Are we allowed to drive this now that we're not cops? Oh, no worries, dude. I got you cleared with the new name. Your trade dress is actually the colors of your old precinct, and you guys can still call yourselves cops. It's an acronym. It stands for Cool Awesome People. That spells caps. You pronounce the A like an O, like it's French. Caps. 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 Shut up, Elvis. Check it out, Larry. You got cup holders in the back. Put my hands on the cup holders. Wow. Yank the cup holders out and throw them on the ground. This isn't my old car. My old car would have never had something I wanted. Well, they're removed now, dude. Is that going to be okay? All right, I guess. Up in the car. So, all right, I guess we're going to go see Mr. John Ratberg and pay him a visit. We got some questions about Tentacle Guy. All right, sweet man, I'll be right behind you. I kind of don't want the old cop car. I want a cool motorcycle like Bart has. I don't know how to ride a motorcycle. Me either. I also want motorcycle lessons. No way, Elvis. It's going to be like that time you wanted to do a K-9 unit, and then you cried during the dog training. The dog was scary. He bit a guy. It's a police dog. He's supposed to bite people. Not that one, Mason. That one went crazy and mauled the instructor. They had to put it down. Oh, really? I thought that was part of the training. Wait, that wasn't part of the training? No, of course it wasn't. The guy got 20 stitches. So you guys arrive outside the landlord's apartment. Is there anything you want to do before you go in? Oh, check out the apartment applications. How much for a place? Well, you could have afforded this place on your old salary. I passed by three to know if that's a good deal. Well, it's affordable, but any poverty-stricken area is going to be a bad deal. A landlord knows that if you're hard on your luck, you're going to have a difficult time moving, so they take advantage. I can make it work. Guys, when we're done, I'm going to put in an application. Is that okay? Actually, hang on. Let's open with that. Elvis, apply for an apartment, then ask if you can get a special deal. 
Heck, I'll even go through with it. A free apartment is just as good as living with my parents, except for the loneliness. Maybe I can buy a bunch of fish. All right, get out of the car, bang on the door. All right, it's night. You guys are still working night shift. So a somewhat bleary-eyed man opens the door. He's going bald and he's got a pencil mustache. Hello? Hello, Mr. Ratberg. I work night shift. Is that okay? It's not my concern what time of day you work, sir, but the offices are closed. Put my foot in the door. No, wait, my friend needs housing. I will do anything for housing. Please, you're the last place that we've looked. No one else will see us at this hour and we have a down payment. Give me persuasion. Uh, pass by zero. He sighs and says, Very well, come inside. I go in. Sir, this is my friend Elvis. He's looking for a place to live. I see. And who are you? My name is Mason. I'm Elvis's gay friend. Wait, really? I see. And will you be staying at the residence as well? Well... We didn't discuss this ahead of time. No. Uh, no. I'm just Elvis's supportive gay friend. And I'm not gay, but I'm here to support Mason. Let it be known I am not here to support Elvis. I'm not exactly sure what we gain from all these disclosures, gentlemen. All I need to know is your financial history. Well, I'm here to support Mason in being strong and who he was born as, in case Elvis tried to keep it a secret. All right, he says. He gestures to Bart. And what is this tall, intimidating fella here for? Bart waves and he goes, I'm John Johansson, and I'm here... You're John... You're John Johnson. Right, I'm, I'm John Johnson, and I'm a journalist writing about the complicated lifestyles of uh, the Gay Straight Alliance and their allies or whatever. I had to go to a meeting about it once, and there was a lot about sensitivity, so being supportively open is being open to support, and every foundation requires support. You know, like a steel beam in a building. Some steel beams are more flexible than other steel beams, and they come in different shapes and sizes, but it takes every kind of steel beam to build a certain type of building. We here at Google understand that a diversity of different beams is essential to having a working place with a bunch of different beams in it. And because your data is our business, we have engineered understanding of who you are as a diverse individual. Therefore, we're happy to announce our initiative to use other skin colors and races and genders and whatever thing we're doing right now to extract revenue from you. Making the world a better place with responsible business initiatives and synergistic fusion integration of market forces. Thank you. Applaud. Very nice, John. Thanks, dudes. I kind of remembered it. Ratberg goes, what in the heck is going on? Oh, what? Now you know something about every one of us, and we're better established. Now we know who we are, Ratberg. But what did you say? You just said, hi, I'm John Ratberg. But what do we know about you? Do you have a favorite color? Do you like ice cream? Nothing. You're not a person, Ratberg. You're just a name. I didn't even tell you my name. Pull my gun on him. Well, then you have no personhood at all. Who even are you? I don't believe your cover story. Mine was very convincing, but you didn't respect it. So now you're going to give my friend a lease, or I'm going to blow your brains across your living room slash office. Lord, why do all my tenants apply for leases this way? These are difficult times we're living in, where if you follow the social contract, you get taken advantage of. I would like to point out to you, you know we'll pay rent, because if I don't get my money, I shoot people. Ugh. <laughs> Give me persuasion, just so I have an angle on how this should be read by Ratberg. Pass by four. I guess your insanity does have a certain logic to it, though most of my patrons try to hide their more illicit dealings. And for the record, two people can live together without being romantically intertwined. I don't know if you realized. I did not think of that. I have been living with my girlfriend for a long time, and it is kind of an unhealthy codependent situation. Uh, I think it just seemed natural I had to be dating Elvis to live with him, but then I'm not going to live with him anyway. So th the point is, he's good for the rent. Yeah, but I don't want to pay rent, though. Right. Yes, he's good for it, but he doesn't want to pay it. Do you have any special coupons, deals, or introductory prices where we get a lease and don't pay rent? Well, gentlemen, would you be willing to participate in a clinical trial? Yes. For the record, I want you to know that I'm not really supportive of Mason either. That was all part of my ruse. Look, the less I know about you people, the better this will be for me. Please don't tell me anything more about yourselves. I'm going to get your paperwork. Just give me a moment. He leaves the room. That was pretty good, guys. I don't think he believed for a second that any of us had a history in law enforcement. I wouldn't believe it. You don't believe in anything, Lowry. And I'm never disappointed. I thought you were constantly disappointed. I mean, I never drop from my baseline. I'm always a consistent, comfortable level of disappointment. This cop psychology stuff is pretty amazing, dude. I don't know how you keep all the lies straight. We got exactly what we wanted out of this guy, but didn't even dangle him over a roof. Really makes you wonder if Batman is good at his job, or if he's just using roofs as a crutch. 
Uh, roofs are a rookie thing. You start off dangling criminals over roofs, but then you get comfortable in the job and you start to realize most criminals are dumb, and it's way easier to have them step out of the car and do a breathalyzer. Ratberg comes back with the papers. So, Ratberg, who set you up with this deal? Oh, uh, Google set him up with this. Wait, John, we already know that Google is behind this? Yeah, I read it in some emails that I wasn't supposed to look at. That's when I realized that with great powers comes great responsibility, man, just like in the comic books. Ratberg kind of looks at you guys and he goes, So you are aware of this opportunity before you walk through the door? Don't listen to John. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Come on, guys. Hang on, I'm filling out the forms. Slap the pen away. No, Elvis. I need a place to live. That's not a cover. I really need a place. Just come on. Don't worry about it. Take the forms with you. You don't want to settle for the first place we come to, Elvis. We have to shop around. Well, I hope for my sake you find another place. I don't know what's going on here, but that deal is 100% legal. You can read it in its entirety, but you should note the clause that says that by laying eyes on the document, you agree to a terms of service, which binds you to a non-disclosure agreement. Oh, well, I just signed it without reading it, so... That puts you even more on the hook. That's more binding. Dang, they think of everything these days. Come on, Elvis. We'll do some comparison shopping and come back. Usher everybody outside, then grab Bart. It's Google? It's the company you're in charge of? Yeah, man. I thought I mentioned... I was hanging out a while ago, and my dad left his computer open, so, you know, naturally, I just kind of checked to see what sort of dirty picture he'd have on his browser, but he had his emails open, and he was talking about some kind of experimental nanomachine technology being tested out in these parts, and they're saying it was, like, killing people and stuff. So you know who's responsible? Uh, no, I mean, I I didn't get a chance to read all of it. I just saw the area name, so I came and I scouted the place out, And then I figured out John Ratberg was involved, and that's as far as I got, man. Bart, can you just ask the company to stop the project? No way, man. Then I'd have to go to the board meeting and argue with my dad. And they always vote in favor of my dad. It's all politics, man. I really thought you guys would have wiretaps and access to all my dad's emails and stuff by now. First of all, that is expensive. We we could never afford that. And second of all, that sounds like a ton of work, and it's not even in our jurisdiction. Yeah, I guess that, and if there were any criminal stuff... Everyone in charge just gets a pardon from the president. Heck, I got one after you guys arrested me, just in case. Man, really? We didn't even have any evidence yet. Yeah, my lawyer said something about that, but he's all about results, you know. He's a good lawyer. I'll give you his number in case one of you guys get arrested later. Why would we get arrested, Bart? We are pursuing a crime here, right? Uh, that's the thing, dude. I gotta say, it's probably all legally on the up and up, like technically on paper. So long story short, Bart's arm transforms into some kind of laser cannon. I was just going to blow everything up when I found out where they were doing the experiments. Is that cool with you guys? I mean, yes, that is super cool. Can I get one of those? It's also very illegal. That's why my lawyer will help you out. Well, I guess we're being paid enough. Are we? Yeah, trust me. Elvis, you see any information on where to go for these experiments? I passed by two to find that information on the paperwork. It's there on the sheet. Yeah, there's an address for the clinic that you'll go to. All right, then. That's where we're headed. Next stop, Explosion City, man. I got to use the restroom real quick. All right, everybody get some water. Take a second. You know what? I think billionaires should be superheroes. It'd be good for corporate branding. It's dangerous work, Mason. All right, Lowry, yeah, it's dangerous. But at one point in history, PepsiCo had one of the largest navies in the world. Did they use that to conquer an unstable nation and bring peace? No, they did not. Actually, Mason, I think they bought that navy in the first place to keep it out of the hands of unscrupulous despots. No, I think they did no good in the world, la la la, I'm not listening. Geopolitics has no real heroes. Just bad guys and worse guys. Well, Paul, I guess what I'm asking is for some billionaire to look at all his riches and say, I could be the king of Monte Carlo, or some other micronation. All this, over here, I could just own that. And then he takes over and, I don't know, personally fights crime. Well, I mean, then are you really still a hero? It's more like the crazy despot that Pepsi was trying to save us from. It is a really fine line, but if you get to write the newspapers, and then you marginalize yourself because that's what the newspapers do to the heroes, then you are a hero because you're the underdog. And you're just your own worst enemy. If you wrote it well enough, controlling Monte Carlo would be part of your superpowers. A lot of heroes own mega corporations, but they never talk about the company sweatshops or how they're making more poverty through their lobby efforts. Actually, I think Black Panther might count for this. He runs a country. 
Lowry, there are definitely comics that comment on politics and corporation, but they're sort of artsy-fartsy, and they aren't really as much fun as just having an infinitely rich guy dress up as an animal and punch theme villains. On that note, you know what's going to be sad if there's no theme villains for Bart to punch at the end of all this? Uh, I mean, high technology is kind of like a theme. It's a setting theme, not a supervillain theme. I'm back. What's this about technology not being a theme? That's totally a villain theme. Like, half of all villains are tech villains. There's Lex Luthor and Brainiac. I mean, it's not a villain theme for this game, Elvis. It's everybody's theme. We're playing a cyberpunk game. Everybody's cyborgs. Yeah, but that makes it a setting theme. It's not a villain theme. Everybody's a villain in cyberpunk. It doesn't matter. Let's get back into it. You guys investigated a murder. The victim burst into tentacles. You met an android piloted by one of the richest men in the world, and his company is responsible for the whole tentacle thing. You're now headed off to a clinic where you presume people are being injected with tentacles. And that's when this game took a turn for the adults-only rating. Silence, Lowry! Was there anything you wanted to do before going to the clinic listed on the paperwork that you guys got? Nope, I think we got it. Alright, the clinic is in this part of town, so it's not that long of a drive. You pull up with Bart following behind and see the building is standing alone in sort of a strip mall parking lot. There's some other businesses around. I pass by two to see what kind of businesses. I don't know, typical strip mall stuff? Chinese food, specialty grocery store, karate... Is any of it owned by Google? I haven't really given a lot of thought to how the economy's supposed to work in this cyberpunk future, so I guess I'll just say that they're technically independent, but basically owned by Google indirectly somehow. Whatever happened to Amazon or any of the other big companies? They all merged. I don't care. It doesn't matter. There's a Thai restaurant. They have Wi-Fi. Aw, sweet. You guys want to get Thai food later? If we're going to do Thai food, it better be before we blow up this research clinic, man. Because I feel like it'll be really easy to catch us if we just hang around a Thai restaurant. I could go for Thai food. Uh, on second thought, let's do Indian, but in a different part of town. And I guess not at 3 a.m. Speaking of, is this clinic open? It's actually a 24-hour clinic, according to their window, so yes. All right, so we need a plan of attack. I got a laser cannon, man. I meant more like a stealthy plan of attack. That's a good plan B, though. Nah, the stealth model is way more expensive, and a lot of the technology is still experimental. The cloaking device isn't really invisible. I know, it false advertising, right? But R&D is really stalled out on fixing that problem. You have more of these cyborg bodies? Only the stealth one and the prototype. This commando model is the only one that's fully functional. At the risk of having a conscience, let's see if we can find out whether these guys are even doing anything wrong. That's good police thinking, man. I feel like the evidence all lines up pretty good right now, but the case for us blowing up the clinic will be even tighter if we double check it. Yeah, that comes straight out of the cop manual they give you on the first day. You can blow up a house or place of business if you find proof they're doing stuff you don't like. I don't remember reading that. Was that for our old job, or did you guys get a manual when we became caps? Well, I guess we could go in and have Elvis just get the procedure. But then I'll be full of evil tentacle nanites. I guess that might be bad. Maybe we should think of a plan where one of us doesn't die. Well, I'm waiting, Lowry. What's your plan where one of us doesn't die? I didn't say I would think of the plan. I'm just going to poke holes in your plans until we get frustrated and do something without having any idea. Well, the heck with that. Let's just go in, then. Paul, we go inside. Okay, it looks like an average clinic. There's a receptionist at the desk. It's pretty quiet, being the dead of night and all. The receptionist looks up and says, Do you have an appointment? I'm afraid we don't, ma'am. We're... We're the cops! I mean the caps! Oh, the cops? Is something wrong? Dang it, Elvis! Oh, were we not gonna flash our badges? No, you were gonna get the procedure! But that'll kill me! I thought we said that'd kill me! Uh, hang on, let me get the doctor in charge. Thank you, that would be wonderful. This wasn't part of the plan, Elvis. There wasn't a plan. I thought just walking in meant that I was in the lead. Not if you're gonna kill me. If I have to get injected, I should get to lead. And I say we're the caps and we want to see all your illegal stuff. Well, remember, dude, it's probably legal. It's just highly unethical and should be stopped. Okay, look, guys, we can still salvage this. It was over as soon as it got beyond arresting poor people. This is out of our depth. The receptionist comes back with the doctor. He's an older guy, bald and with a bushy mustache. Hello, gentlemen, I understand you have some kind of problem. You're dang right we do. Listen up. If I walk through the door and everyone follows, does that mean that I'm in the lead? Or do I cede leadership to the guy whose life is at risk? You're the only one who can answer this. You're a neutral party. Is that why you're here? Well, for only counting the span of the last, like, minute or so, yes. Well, expanding beyond the last minute or so, why are you in my office? Tell Mason that I'm in charge because it's my life at risk. Honestly, gentlemen, I, I'm gonna need more context or I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. It's really kind of you to give a choice between more context and kicking us out. You really should kick us out, though. No, don't listen to Lowry. Lowry's part of the problem. See, we needed to come up with the plan before we went in, and Lowry's just being critical, and that's why we couldn't make a plan. Tell him, Doc. Okay, 
Larry, you should make up a plan. And I have a plan, but it does, admittedly, put Elvis's life at risk. Okay, well, that sounds like a grievance for Elvis. In what manner is his life at risk? Give him the paperwork, Elvis. It is my understanding that in exchange for free rent on Mr. Ratberg's land, I will be injected with deadly, deadly chemicals. Okay, I think I understand now. He takes the paperwork. <laughs> yes, I see. Uh, and John Ratberg told you I would inject you with deadly, deadly chemicals, is that correct? No. Actually, we threatened him with a gun and then we left. He didn't really tell us much of anything. And you say that you're the cops? No, we're CAPS. It's an acronym. It stands for Cool Awesome People. Bart goes, Yeah, man, I came up with it, man. The doctor says, Okay, I think I follow you so far. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna call Mr. Ratberg and clear some things up. Okay. Should we just wait in the reception? I suppose, if you have nowhere else to be. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess you guys sit down in the waiting room while the doctor goes to the back. Bart sits down next to you and he says, I gotta be honest, guys. I got no idea where we're going with all this. Seems kind of like we blew our cover. Ah, don't worry about it, man. See, a lie is about telling as much truth as you can get away with. As far as I'm concerned, this guy knows we're out to get him, and that we're caps, and that we got that paperwork from Ratberg. That's all true. While he's focused on wondering why we're so dumb, it's never going to cross his mind that you have a transforming laser cannon built into your body to kill him with. Whoa, dude. That's genius. He was never going to suspect that in the first place. The point is he can't possibly suspect it now because we're too dumb. He can't suspect it because not even we know what we're doing. Well, then the element of surprise is going to strike us all and hard. The doctor comes back out. He says, well, I talked to Radberg and he said you were looking for a lease. So I suppose if you just finish signing the papers, I can give you the injections and you can be on your merry way. Wait, will the injections kill me or not? They shouldn't. It'd be kind of a problem if they do. Hang on, are you lying to me? I'm a cap. You have to tell me if you're lying to me. Well, it's all in the paperwork. You, you signed a liability waiver and a bunch of other unconscionable things, but then I didn't write the thing. Someone's lawyer did. All right. Well, if that's the way it is, there's no way I'm going to read all this or hire a lawyer, so here you go. Paul signed the papers. Thank you. You know, you sign one of these just to download a video game these days. There really should be a law against this, but there aren't. Anyway, come on. Ooh, got a little cyberpunk commentary on society. Go with the nice doctor. Follow Elvis. Uh, I'm afraid only the patient is allowed to come back with me. Confidentiality rules, you see. Look, either we all go together, or I get out my gun and make a scene. And then you can call the real police, and they'll take me away, and I'm not going to shoot anyone. But it's going to be traumatic for you anyway. I suppose your friend could consent to your company if those are my two options. Uh... Okay, as long as I don't have to get naked. You don't. All right. The doctor pulls out more paperwork. Just sign these forms. Well, what am I agreeing to? Everything. Anything. It's a terms of service. We throw the kitchen sink at it. Just agree to it and we can move on. Man. Fine. Sign the paperwork. Try to read it. It's a fairly thick docket. I passed by 14 to understand the docket. You what? I passed by 14. Are you reading the dice right? You can't pass by 14. I put all my character points into bureaucracy. Really? Really? You had 120 points. You put every single one into bureaucracy. Yes. I could successfully reorganize the entire national government so that every law and regulation is recorded on a convenient post-it note. But I chose to work here with these people. Why? Why, why, why would you do that? Because society doesn't deserve my powers. <laughs> okay, uh, heck. Well, it's full of all kinds of misleading clauses. Most of them are not enforceable, but it does give them valid reasons to drag you to court, and the cost of court alone is usually enough to win any dispute. But I'm making millions of dollars now, so I'm immune to that. You are. Court fees are nothing to you now. And even if they weren't, I already know how to turn this around 6,000 different ways. Why did you not use this power when we arrested Bart? We, we could have got him. A big part of law is following the right procedures in the first place, and I figured that ship probably already sailed. Anyway, I signed this document, Paul. All right, document signed. To the casual observer, you just flip through a few pages and sign like everybody else. The world none the wiser that a legal savant was mildly inconvenienced just now. I am God among a world of fools that shackle themselves with paperwork. I am perfection. Yet to entangle myself in the needs of the imperfect would imperfect me. Well, Lowry once again wins the award for the most passively evil person in the whole campaign. And I'm gonna get away with it. No one will ever know. Well, the doctor hands the paperwork to the receptionist and says, Come with me. Then he leads you to a patient room. 
He says, wait right here. I'll go get the injection. What do we do, guys? I'm going to die from tentacles. It's all right. We'll take the vial away before he injects you. Elvis, it's all going according to plan. It can't fail if we weren't trying to have a plan. The doctor comes back with some sort of vial and syringe. Snatch the vial away. What is this? It says saline solution. What is that? What is saline? It means salt water. It's not a real drug. Well, yes. You're not supposed to know this, but my clinic is participating in a double-blind experiment. I'm handling the control solution, which I was about to administer to your friend. So what? Doesn't do anything? No, it doesn't. I mean, you believe it will, but it rather ruins the experiment for you to know it's just salt water. If some injection has been causing a problem, it's almost certainly come from another clinic involved in the trial. Oh. So shall I inject your friend or not? Do I still get the free rent? I suppose that's what's in the contract, yes. All right, hit me. He injects you with salt water. Now that's that. If there's nothing else to bother, I've got some paperwork to file. All right, head out the door. Well, guys, that was dumb. I feel dumb. You think Ratberg has different contracts? I mean, I guess he must. I bet he pulled a fast one on us. Dang it, that Ratberg. Why would they let Ratberg know which clinic is doing real injections and which is doing fake ones? Wait a minute. Double blind means the researcher doesn't know which vial is the control group. The doctor lied to us. Oh, oh no. Oh, am I going to die? Maybe. Probably not. How do you feel? Am I dying, Paul? Well, you didn't feel like that before, but now that you're freaking out about it, you do feel a little sick to your stomach. Oh, God, I'm going to throw up. That guy poisoned me. Elvis, get a hold of yourself. It was just salt water. My heart's palpitating. I'm starting to black out. You got to breathe normally, Elvis. Think about your breathing. I've forgotten how. Paul, hyperventilate, then pass out. Elvis passes out. Bart goes, this doctor is truly one step ahead, man. The only thing smarter than cops is doctors. I don't know if that's true. A good lawyer might also be up there. The only thing smarter than cops are doctors and good lawyers. Certain kinds of birds are also pretty smart. Doctors, good lawyers, and maybe certain kind of birds are the only thing smarter than a good cop. Which type of birds are smarter than people? Well, you've never seen a crow get arrested, but they steal stuff all the time. Pretty smart birds. Anyway, shake Elvis awake. All right, Elvis, you wake up. Wake up! Uh, 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 what? You hyperventilated and passed out, but I need you with us, Elvis. We gotta go back in that clinic and tell that guy that we're on to him. All right, all right, I'm right behind you, Officer Mason. Barge back in the clinic, push past the receptionist, find the doctor, pull my gun on him. Hey, that's not how a double-blind experiment works. You think I'm stupid? Well, I wasn't gonna say anything. Shut up and start talking, Doc. Either you're a terrible researcher or the real stuff is somewhere else. Where are you keeping the nanomachines? All right, fine. You got me. Don't you lie to me. I mean, yes, I got you, but don't lie to me. I'll know. I thought we couldn't roll to know if people are lying. Shut up, Elvis. Well, follow me. I knew this would happen eventually. Somebody had to find out. He waves you onto a back room, unlocks the door, and then he heads downstairs. I wish we had police training so we knew if following a suspect into his basement was a good idea. That's fine. We're uncovering crime. He leads you down a spiral staircase one floor, then opens another door. It reveals a small, somewhat threadbare lab, but what immediately draws your attention is the massive tube at the far end of the room. Inside is some writhing, organic-looking black mass. This is it. This is the experiment. Now, it didn't start off this way, of course. We were trying to help people, you see. We were developing a drug that would persist in the body and heal injuries, fight disease, all that good stuff. But there was an unexpected side effect. You made a guy burst into tentacles. Is that our guy? Is that what's left of that guy? Did the waiver mention this? Yes, it was in there. Something about unforeseen consequences. At any rate, it was good for what it was meant for. It heals basic injuries and it improved the health of the patient. But in a human subject, if the wounds became grievous enough, the nanites took over. The second case joined with the first, then the third joined the main mass, and so on. We were able to contain it here, and I believe it has some level of intelligence. Behold! He picks up a remote and he points it at a TV hanging on the wall you guys came in from. It's set to some sort of nature documentary. The creature raises up a tentacle, taps the glass, and the channel changes to some cheap, mentally addictive children's programming. Baby shark doo 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 STOP IT! The doctor aggressively changes the channel. We've been trying to educate it, but... Baby STOP! The doctor turns off the TV. It just wants to rot its brain on cheap cartoons! We're not sure what to do with it now. Maybe weaponize the injection somehow? Sell it to the military to kill people or something? I don't know. How many people? What? How many people did you inject with this drug? Oh, I don't know. About 500 in the initial trial, but only very serious injuries lead to this result. 500 people? They were sort of just in the background at first. Your attention was really pulled by the nano monster, but it becomes a little bit more apparent that there's other people in this room as they draw around you. 
It's four armed guards who are just hanging around playing cards by the looks of it. One of them says, Hey, listen, Doc. We were hired to make sure that nobody spreads word about this thing. Google doesn't want to go paying any fines. The doctor says, Yes, I understand, but someone would find out eventually. Besides, the fines are nothing to a massive corporation. What difference does it make? The guy says, All I know is what I was hired to do, and I'm not about to be fired. Mason, I feel like now is a good time to remind you that Elvis and I don't really know how to shoot, and will definitely be killed by anyone with training. Bart says, Did I read you loud and clear, dude? He throws up his arm and a glowing field of energy erupts from his wrist. The guards sort of stumble backwards and one of them fires their gun in a panic. The bullet vaporizes when it hits the shield. I got us covered, man! Get to positions! Oh god, uh, dive behind the door frame. I follow. Same. The guards dive behind some of the bulkier lab equipment and computers. The doctor says, what are you doing? You can't hide behind those! But regardless, they start taking shots at the shield with their rifles. Doesn't look like anything's going through. Bart says, okay guys! This shield works both ways, so we can't shoot through it either. I'm gonna drop it on the count of three and start firing weapons. His arm transforms into a laser cannon. One, two, three! Bart, Bart, wait! He drops the shield. Dang it, Bart! The nano monster twitches in its tube like it's agitated. Bart revs up his gun and lays down a blistering stream of suppressive laser fire. The other guards duck behind cover. Shoot my plasma gun! Okay. Wow, is that the damage on it? Yeah. Now I need to wait two minutes before it has enough power to fire again. Okay, uh, well, Elvis leans out from the doorway and fires a molten ball of plasma across the room, completely vaporizing a computer box into slag and liquefying the guy behind it. You can feel the heat radiating across the room. The nano monster recoils. Guys, we are pissing off the nano machines. A grenade sails out from one of the computers and it detonates in the middle of the floor. Everyone who is looking out into the room, you're blind for three phases. Gah! Dang it, not again. I didn't even get a turn. Why does everyone have flash grenades? The doctor yells, Are you idiots? My eyes! Bart just keeps on firing. You hear conventional gunfire. Bullets ricochet off of something metallic. Ping, ping, ping. You hear someone cry out in all the chaos. Ah! Then there's a sound of glass breaking. Bart yells, My controls aren't working, man! When your eyes clear up, you see the nano monster is broken out of the tube. Spreading out across the room. It's already covered up where the guards were. Oh, oh Jesus. The monster grabs the doctor. The doctor yells, No! Why? I let you watch TV! There's sucks! And then he's gone. Bart goes, All right, guys, how do we arrest the nano machines? We don't! We gotta run, Bart! I run. Full tilt. No looking back. Bart, come on! But crime, man! We gotta fight it, man! And besides, I'm not even really here! It's not a crime, Bart! It's maybe a crime against humanity, but it's not a legal crime! The creature grabs him. Bart! It's not even his real body! Let's go! But it's such a cool body. Okay, let's go. Before you get out of there, the nanomachines begin to rapidly condense. They form together into the most beautiful naked man you could possibly imagine. He opens his eyes and says, Happy birthday. Okay. I don't know if any of this was ever normal, but it got weirder. Keep running. Paul, I run to the car. Larry doesn't look back. The nude man says, Fear not, for I am perfection. I am all that man can hope to be. Okay. That's a pretty bold claim. I've thought that about myself maybe a hundred times, and I usually haven't been right. I understand. In what way can I assist humanity? You could put some clothes on. Clothing that looks like your own forms from nanomachines over his body. He's got the colors right and everything. All right, thank you. Your junk was immaculate, but still rude. I know it is my destiny to lead man into a better age. Turn on the car. Drive away. Drive far away. In what manner do you need my assistance? Well, have you ever thought about becoming a cop? We always need more cops. You feel I should police humanity? Yeah, I mean, it's a hard job, and cops are the foundation of society, you know? There's some people who say otherwise, especially this one troll on a botany forum I'm part of, but don't pay any attention to them. I see. So humanity requires authority. Elvis, uh, this might be a bit above our pay grade. That I enforce the laws upon man. Is this all society requires to flourish? It is a very important part of society that we cannot do without. I mean, you also have to have good leadership. You know, leadership doesn't always get the laws right, so you don't want to just blindly follow them all the time. So you believe I should lead? Uh, that wasn't exactly where I was going. I must lead and establish authority. Without these pillars, there shall not be a perfect society. Okay, Elvis, I I think we've really screwed this up. Uh, okay. Well, I guess, uh... I'll never bow to the machine! Shoot the guy. 
<laughs> All right. I don't know what you expect to happen, but the bullet lands in the man. You're not really sure if it hurt him. It disturbed where you hit him. He says, I believe I understand your gesture. I will pass your test and exert my authority now. Just real quick, can you guys actually fight? Like, could you do anything if I threw this guy at you and he could actually do harm to you? <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. The heel of my shoe is actually a grenade. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll give you a chance to throw that if you want. That might get him. All right, here goes. Ah, oh, dang. Man. That's a really bad roll. Okay, all right. Uh, well, you throw the grenade, and it bounces off the top frame of the door and lands between you. Elvis, I don't know how, but I always knew it was going to be you. I kind of knew it would be the grenade. The grenade explodes. Well, that was a good run. So what happens next, Machine Apocalypse? Well, you guys are paced thanks to your own weapons, and Lowry lives to see the rise of the Machine Emperor. It's not all bad. He learns really quickly, and his laws are fairly just and swiftly enforced. In some ways it's better, in some ways it's worse, but they teach that in schools it only got better. I honestly don't even know the Machine Emperor and the nano machines we saw are the same thing. I guess not. But there it is, guys. You uncovered the mystery and ushered the world into a new age of law and order for better or worse. I guess our legacy was always going to outlive us. Uh, well, thanks, Paul. That was fun. Thanks for the game. Thank you, Paul. It was pretty good. I had a good time. Thanks, guys. Are they going to do something kind of dumb and ad-lib next week? Are you guys going to be cool with that? Sure. Yeah. It sounds good to me. All right. Well, then you guys have a safe drive home, and I will see you later. Hey, if you like this show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find us under Don Somewhere. And if you're interested in some other things that we've done, we've actually been making content for a few years now. You can find our social media on donsomewhere.com, as well as a couple of other things. Again, that's Don Somewhere. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, new episodes go up one week early there. DonSomewhere.com